Hello, everyone. Welcome back to uh, High Shelf Gaming's 12 Days of Gaming. I am Simon at Wandering DM, and uh, tonight uh, we will delve into an adventure entertainment for Castle Falkenstein. Um, before we begin, I would just like to uh, talk about a little bit of uh, about these uh, 12 days of actual play. Uh, this is in support of the charity The Trevor Project, which I highly encourage everyone to support. Um, we have currently raised $1,350, and with your help, hopefully we'll raise a whole lot more. Uh, we are going to have a bunch of giveaways tonight. Uh, we'll have gift cards for Reaper miniatures. We'll have an advanced reader copy of the Humblewood campaign setting uh, for D&D 5th edition. Uh, we'll have, all in all, we'll have three giveaways, one uh, early on during our game, one at the midpoint, and one at the very end. Um, but before we launch into our game, um, let's just go around our table tonight. I would like uh, all of you, if um, you can, dear players, introduce yourselves and talk to us in a sentence or two about who you'll be playing tonight. Um, I will start with the person to my left on the overlay, and we're going to go counterclockwise, so we'll begin with Anino. Good evening, everyone. My name is Anino. I use he, him pronouns, and uh, for this one shot, I will be playing Nibir, the uh, irreverent butler to uh, Lady Siana. Also oh. uses he, him pronouns, and has some other skills in it. Probably won't keep hidden under wraps for a bit. Apparently, we had no audio on you, Anino. Ooh. Some just quiet. Oh, okay. Um, Ethan, if you want to just boost the volume of Anino on, uh, on the call. Okay, can we try one more time, Anino? Testing, one, two, three. Chat, is that better? Oh yeah, there's a delay between us and chat. So while the answer, oh, it's about the same. Hmm. Okay. Um, I'm going to tweak a few things here on my end then. Okay. So I'll move to someone else and um, we'll come back to you and, you know, uh, after, uh, after we've gone around the table. So the next person will be uh, right next to and, you know, on the overlay, Hannah. Hi, my name is Hannah. I use she, her pronouns. And tonight I will be playing Lady Siana, who also uses she, her pronouns. She is. Well, I guess we'll find out. But she does have a very loyal butler. So that's one thing she's got going for her. <laughs> um, up next is going to be uh, Sai. Did I pronounce that right? You did pronounce it right. Hi, I'm Sai. I use they, them pronouns. Tonight I'm playing Mittens, uh, the cat. And well, I guess we'll see about that. And uh, last but certainly not least, Drist. Hey, I go by Drist online. Um, today, I, I, I use they, them pronouns. Today, I am playing Inspector Richard T, Richardson T. Armstrong. He's a paranormal investigator um, that I just threw together. I hope you all will enjoy him. I'm looking forward to this game. I too am enjoy going to enjoy putting you through the peculiar haunting of one Mr. John Wood, which is the title of our game tonight. Let's um, send our minds back on an alternate Earth, one where the stories of early 19th century writers actually did happen. There 
are dragons, there are elves, there are dwarves and fairies, and we live in a world of magic and steam technology. New Europa, the continent in which we play, is somewhat similar to Europe of the 1800s. However, we are going to begin our adventure and pretty much play all of it on a small island off the northern coast of New Europa. A tiny coin place called England in a tiny little village called London. Um, in this bustling metropolis where dwarven workers rub elbows with the countless uh, factory workers that uh, come in and out of work as the sun rises and sets in the evening. We... We'll begin in a hospital. Let's set the scene. The camera enters into a room as you hear the coughing of the many sick and ill of, uh, of London, many of them suffering from diseases of the lungs due to the high amount of uh, pollution, smoke, and coal in the air. In this room, a private room, actually, so we already know that the person inside is somewhat wealthy, lays a man in his bed. An older gentleman in his 70s with big, sporting big, bushy um, uh, sideburns. White, of course, with age. Most of his head has been covered by this uh, nightcap. And he's wearing, of course, a, a pale blue and white striped pajamas. His head and shoulders are supported by uh, about four massive pillows that hold him almost between sitting upright and lying down on his back. On his lap sits or lies down, I guess, curled up, our first character. Sai, how would you describe yourself? I'm average size for a, a, a cat. I have silver blue fur, short. Uh, my eyes are blue, although kind of a strange color blue for a cat, honestly. And I'm very com contentedly laying in his lap, purring while he scratches and scratches and just sort of has me there. Um, we can hear the old man mutter to his cat, oh, I hope they do not tarry mittens. This, and he looks longingly out the very dirty window. This place does not do good for the soul or my wallet. Nudges into his hands and purrs and just go. Ah. Hopefully, hopefully, before the sun goes down, everyone will be here. Fret not, they'll come. I hope so. They've all, one way or another, have called themselves my friends. Now, in my hour of need, I do so hope that they are what they said they were. And we'll zoom out of this hospital room and head downstairs as the hustle and bustle of London quiets down for the evening. People are still quite afraid to walk the streets at night, especially since uh, we are but a few months away from the last 
uh, killings of the um, of the Ripper um, murders. Down on the street, we would see um, another character make their way to the hospital. I forgot to ask, uh, but my dear inspector, do you own a vehicle or do you walk everywhere? I would say I, I would say due to a lack of certain I don't have money, so of course I would walk. <laughs> All right. Then uh, treading on the sidewalk uh, is this figure, this inspector coming to see Mr. John Wood. Uh, what, would, what do you look like? Someone walking down the streets, what would they see? So I am a very tall man dressed in simple patched together clothing, clothing wearing a black detective's coat with and a stovetop pipe hat. I have fingerless woolen gloves, and I have boots with kind of loose soles. They're barely held together with um, some twine, maybe some tied together rope, something like that. I have a, I have long black hair with a streak of white through it, amber eyes, and a neatly trimmed beard. I walk with a cane with a crow at topping it, wood carved crow topping it. Um, you make your way down the street. By the way, we are in December, and yet it hasn't snowed at all over the town of London. Everything is wet and mushy. Um, there's just trash everywhere, even in front of this, uh, the Queen's Hospital that they call. You make your way up the stairs, and uh, find yourself a few minutes later at the bedside of one Mr. John Wood. So I hand any nurse that's standing in there my hat. About damn time I got here. Pleasure to meet you, Mr. Wood. Oh, Richardson. How glad am I to see you here. Of everyone. Don't kind of bullshit. Okay. Don't have to bullshit me. I know you don't really like me. Hmm. Astute as always. Please. Take a... And he looks around and you realize there are no chairs in his room. And so he rings a little bell next to his bed. Oh, no need. I'd rather not take charity, as you said many years ago, when I needed that funding. For that little research project. I don't need your charity, I think you called it. Well, so be it. A dying man is offering you a gesture of good faith, but you can ignore it. It is fine. I am not hurt in any way. And he just. You tried that on my mother. You tried that on my mother and it didn't work. Why do you think it would work on me? Um, he just grumbles away, well, grumbles as he keeps uh, scratching, uh, scratching uh, his cat, Mr. Mittens, uh, behind the ear. Next up, a few minutes later, almost riding on the coattails of the inspector, um, is quite an odd couple. How... First of all, I will assume that someone with a name such as Lady has a mean of transportation other than walking. Um, um, of course, I have a car and a driver. Oh, wait, you have one of them fancy automobiles? Yes. Ooh. So your driver would drive you all the way up to the door, park the car, Get out, open the door. I figure a driver, is the driver Nibir? Mm-hmm. Oh, then uh, can we describe, I thought Nibir was just a, a butler and not a driver. <laughs> but uh, Mr. Nibir, what do you look like as we see you get out of the car? So uh, Mr. Nibir 
is a uh, gentleman of Indian descent. Uh, he has a very well-trimmed full beard and mustache, one that I personally cannot grow. Um, and he is smartly dressed as a butler with uh, rather long coattails. Um, but the top button of his shirt is un undone, and his tie is a little bit loose. So he, he kind of doesn't seem to take his role super responsibly. Um, but he stands at about maybe 6'2", a little bit on the rail thin side. Um, and he always is carrying a uh, pilot's case. Just a big, uh, uh, sizable um, suitcase that's got brass trappings and uh, constructed out of wood. And uh, you will have that in hand as he um, opens the door for his employer. His employer, gingerly stepping out of the car, looks like what exactly? Bizarrely pale. Probably never seen sunlight from a guess. Dark hair done up, but, you know, has some casually falling out, sort of coquettishly. Black attire. This is a solemn occasion, after all. High neck with a ruby choker. All you know, lace, and then a mink stole. Because it is a bit chilly. It is December, after all, even though it hasn't snowed yet. And you uh, step out of the vehicle to make your way into the hospital as a crowd of commoners just assemble around the car and just from a respectable distance, but they keep staring at it as the marvel that it is. They, they try to look under it to see if, you know, you have to walk with your feet to make it run. Um, some attempt to, uh, you see them take out notepads and little pens and try to attempt to make sketches of, of the vehicle. It is, to them, probably the highlight of their day. Just over his shoulder, Nabir is just going to call out, Careful! It bites. There is a <gasps> common gasp among the, uh, the, the crowd, and they shuffle a few steps backward even more. Um, a, a policeman who's guarding, uh, the, or just watching over the entrance to the, uh, the hospital, will just nod at you both as uh, you approach and will say, oh, ma'am, I will personally make sure that no one touches your um what you call it horseless carriage vehicle sir thank you oh no one will bother your vehicle have a grand day and with that you too would make your way up the stairs uh, in, of course, asking the receptionist, blah, 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 where uh, Wood is. And uh, you would find yourselves entering this private room at the Queen's Hospital. Inside, there are already uh, three people. Mr. Wood, his cat, his silver blue cat. Um, you would see the inspector, which you have probably never met before or well let's say um inspector armstrong have you ever done anything that would warrant having your picture taken into one of the newspapers i mean maybe i banished a ghost of some kind sure then, uh yeah you would remember the uh lady sienna high society gossip talking about this, uh, the ghost inspector, they call them. Whereas normal Scotland Yard inspectors will solve crimes of the, the mortal realms, he solves crime of a different nature. 
So he's no friend to non-humans, then, I'm assuming. Um, he seems to... His area of expertise was the, um, the ghastly living dead. Yes. And do I see a wedding ring on this man's finger? Wow. Um, <laughs> first thing as you come in the room, is there a wedding I would ring? Say, I would say yes. I would say yes. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> and, um, of course, Mr. Wood in his bed would uh, turn his head around as you come in and say, Ah, Lady Siana, I would tip you Sorry. my nightcap. Oh, oh please am... don't, don't mm. uh, get up, dear. All right, who's this? Who's this here? Oh, that I can drop the stupid accent thing. I'm sorry? I don't know you. I don't know you either, but that's rather a lot to assume. Always has something to pull out, some trick or something. Just wondering what that trick is. Oh, it is no trick, Richardson. This is my dear friend, Lady Siana. And her- I'll be a first. Um, oh. I'm mad for that. Yes, I, I seem to recall having seen you around. Um, um, Mr. Nabir, is that it? Uh, indeed it is, sir. Uh, yes, well, you see, Mr. Armstrong, I do have friends, and three more are bound to come to my bedside. Well then, three. That's quite an achievement, ain't it? Yes. Despite what you might think of me, Mr. Armstrong, I do count you as one of my friends. And his demeanor tonight, especially for you, Richard, who who's you know, and even even Siana, who's known him for a few years, even though you've not necessarily spent you know months in his presence, he used to be a lot more severe in life. And tonight on his bed, he he almost smiles, and you know doesn't take any. Not that he doesn't take Richardson seriously, but there's like a playful jest in his voice that normally wasn't there. You hear Richardson grab his hat from like the nurse that he passed it to. All right, so he starts picking at the top of his cane, the carved crow. You seem happy about something for someone who's about to die. I uh, maybe um I may not be dying after all but if I am I wish you all to remember me fondly and well I summoned all of you here for and then you hear a on the door frame and as you turn around uh Players, you would notice in uh, if you check our roll twenty in the handouts, you're gonna have pictures of everyone that you meet. Some that you have yet to meet, uh, but uh, John Wood is already there, and these three fellas come in. So for everyone watching, um, three men, almost equal in height, very. British looking. Three businessmen, one dressed in a black frock coat over a uh, black uh, vest. He's wearing uh, beige, well, like brown beige pants and a very fancy uh, city shoes. He supports himself with a cane. This one, compared to one of his other comrades, does not use the cane, or even Armstrong, um, 
do you actually need the cane to walk, or is it just because it's the gentleman thing to do? I like to imagine he has sort of like a sore leg. Not enough that if he can run, he can run for no penalty. It just kind of helps with it a bit. Yeah, okay. Um, so you actually need to use the cane in like a, a um, uh, healthcare uh related uh, use and him too you see that his shoulder the one that he always uses his uh, left shoulder is slightly lower than the right because of how much weight he keeps putting on his cane and him just like mr wood has big bushy black sideburns with a waxed mustache next man next to him uh, a little bit more portly is wearing a uh, buttoned up uh, brown coat with striped black and blue pants. Again, big sideburns, but no mustache. And the third one uh, is uh, a bit more fit. He clearly does not need the cane, and he's the flashiest of all three. His hat is the most avant-garde of all of them. His hair has just been waxed. Um, his beard finely trimmed, and his mustache perfectly curled to follow along his jawline. Uh, and he is uh, wearing a dark navy blue coat. And you can see his uh, uh, golden black cravat uh, popping out of the top of the coat. And uh, they just poke their head in almost comically, all three of them. And Wood says, ah, Speaking of my other friends. Who the hell are the who the hell are these people? Well Detective, this would be and he points to the one with the black coat, Mr. O. The one with the brown coat, Mr. Mac. And the one with the blue coat, Mr. Johnson. They all take their hats off, um, will nod respectfully to Lady Siana, uh, and all three, one by one, will say, ma'am. Uh, and then they would walk up to uh, Richardson first, extend a hand to introduce themselves formally. Richardson looks at the hand, looks at them, chuckles, Shakes the hand, gripping it tight. You notice that of all of them, Johnson is the only one that can like return a firm grip. The other two are either less interested or not as strong. Don't have enough respect to give me a proper handshake. Well, we're not here to introduce ourselves and... Uh... In any formal fashion, I believe this is a very somber occasion. And they turn to Nabir and uh, just, you know, make a little nod of recognition that they don't treat the staff like crap. And uh, Johnson would tap the floor with his cane and say, So, John, why is it that we are here? What is going on? And, um... John to reply, still stroking mittens. Ah, oh, my good friends. I, as you all know, am seriously ill. Things have not been as good as you might have thought in my life, in all the correspondence I've had with all of you over the years. I find myself in my hour of greatest need. I called upon the three of you. He looks to the, the three uh, businessmen. And then the three of you looks to whoops, the detective, Siana and Nabir. Uh, all because I find myself having a peculiar issue. I am... This is related... Go ahead. Sorry for the interruption. Is it related to ghosts in any way, my friend? As a matter of fact, Richardson, it is. 
I find myself being haunted relentlessly. And, well, knowing all of you have some vested interest in my well-being, I summoned you here for a, well, both a favor and a little game. Um, can you all, we're going to do our first roll of the night or our first draw of the night. Um, so Castle Fork and Sheen, for those who don't know, is a game that plays with uh, playing cards and not, um, not dice. So we're going to use a playing cards. Uh, and you don't have, by the way, you do not have to play a card if you do not wish to play a card. You can use just your, um, just your stat if you want, or use a stat in a card. To remind you a bit of the rules, uh, every skill is associated with a suit. If you play a card of that same suit, it is worth whatever number is written on the card. And of course, jacks are worth 10, queens, uh, uh, sorry, jacks 11, queens 12, kings 13, aces 14, and the jokers uh, 15. If you do not play a card of the same suit, then it is only worth one point. We're not going to go into more complicated rules uh, because this is a one shot for tonight. Uh, but normally, um, if you have, uh, you know, certain uh, skill checks will let you roll uh, draw multiple cards and all that stuff. So you all have a hand of four cards that I have uh, given you. When you play a card, by the way, you automatically get a new one after your skill checks. So you'll always have a hand of four cards. So sometimes it's worth it to just, if you're less interested in a skill check or think you're going to succeed anyway, you can just burn a card so that you have a different one in your hand later. So. Our first skill check um, is a, uh, as uh, Mr. Wood is talking about everyone being his friends and being interested and is haunting, um, if you can make a perception check. This is a mental ability. It is tied to the diamond. So you're saying we, we don't have to draw a card if we don't want to? You don't have to draw a card. Let's say you're already great in perception. Maybe you'll say, you'll, and, and it might be accurate. Oh, I'm great at perception. I'm not going to roll. I'm fairly certain I'm going to beat DC. DCs aren't very high in, um, in Castle Falkenstein. I'm great at and... perception. So 10 for the inspector. I am, for perception, I am good. So I am going to go ahead and drop my two. Okay, so that's a uh, good plus two. That's an eight. Mm -hmm. uh, mittens, you said you were great at perception, so you're not playing anything. Correct. All right. Uh, what about Nabir and the lady? Nabir is great at perception. All right. I am okay at perception, and I don't think I have any corresponding cards, so I'm just going <laughs> to use my flat skill. All right. So everyone who has uh, an eight or above, which means everyone except Lady Sienna, would... Um, would notice that when Wood is talking about his haunting issue and the reason why he asked everyone to come here, the three uh, businessmen, uh, and I'll refer uh, to them as that uh, whenever I talk about them as a group, but the three businessmen 
sort of roll their eyes at the thought of ghosts, and uh, they just nod along. Clearly, they do not appear to be there because of the ghost issue. There seems to be an underlying, um, an underlying desire. And Wood will continue saying that this is both a favor and a game, and that I thought it would be of interest for all of our friendship, mittens here included, that if you were to rid my estate of this ghost, I will gladly leave it to you. We want the cat to win now. <laughs> everyone sort of stares at each other the same way everyone stared at their camera. <laughs> so he doesn't stare. He quickly whistles. What's the catch? I do not know what the ghost wants. Hi. There you go. I knew you were capable of telling the truth somewhat. I... It's been I'm ongoing. I'm oh, sorry. Darling, please continue. I say, must you antagonize him? Darling, please continue. Just tell us what this is all about. Uh, look. It's been ongoing since this last summer or so. Uh, noises in the house, uh, strange manifestations. Uh, I, uh, I'm hearing things. And then I got <laughs> any coughs a lot. And then I got sick before I probably pass of consumption or something. I thought I would be charitable. If you want my country estate, you can have it. If all of you work together, you can either own it together or sell it for what it's worth and split the money. I will not care one way or another. I only care that these spirits are laid to rest. I would not want to be pursued into the other world with by these devilish things. Miss Taylor, my charwoman, will welcome you at the estate. My notary, Mr. Winters, should arrive uh, tomorrow afternoon. I beg of you, please, do this for me. Mitten sits up and reaches a paw up to his face and rubs the face against his face a little bit and then looks at each person carefully. Mittens will notice... Uh... Severe amount of disinterest in uh, Nabir's expression. Severe. Got it. Um, you'll notice that both of Richardson's hands are on the cane and he's twisting his ring out, out of character. I actually have an idea that I think you'll like wandering. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tell that to my wife. Maybe if you had treated her right when you raised her, she wouldn't be gone. Richardson, my boy, I don't believe this is the moment to talk about it. Uh, not in front of polite company. And he like looks at everyone else with eyes that basically scream, please save me.
Oh, I think someone froze. Mm -hmm. The oh, what? Uh, okay, great. No, the <laughs> businessman. Why are you here? Don't you're not here for this ghost thing. Oh, I think Anna yeah. keeps freezing. Yeah. I'm having a big problem with Discord, sorry. Uh, that's okay. Um, but yeah, uh, the inspector asked you why you were there. No, he asked the businessman, oh. why are you here? Sorry, I heard the woman, that's why. No, no, businessmen. Business the, uh, the, the three of them approach the bed, and uh, Mr. O puts a, a hand gently on, on Wood's shoulder and they say well uh, not oh but um uh, mr mac would turn to you inspector and say we've worked with wood for countless years he was not only a good investor but also a friend and if this ghost and he dismisses the notion with his hand. A problem is as serious as he says it is. We ought to go to his estate and ensure that whoever is there, because honestly, I believe that it is not a ghost, would I believe you have an unwanted tenant? We'll calm your house inside out, if need be. Every little corner, every speck of dust until we find this unwanted tenant. Rest easy, old pal. And uh, Mr. O would tap on his shoulder. We will get to the bottom of this. They straighten their coats, look at all of you, and ask. Um, we were thinking of... renting a coach to get there. You are welcome to come aboard with us if you want. Otherwise, I guess we will see you at the estate. I'll ride with all of you. Unless what, someone has one of those automobiles. But quite nice things about them. Yes, they're quite nice. We think we'll take our own transportation. Thank you. We'll follow behind your car. And uh, what now, um, he would uh, wood will pick up mittens and uh, try to set you on the ground, but he clearly has trouble bending over. Uh, and he he almost like throws you onto the ground. Um, I don't know. mittens knows the house almost as well as Miss Taylor. Don't be fooled. Mittens is very smart animal. Well, Mitten is a very smart creature, I should say. Let's not. His tail flicks back and forth, slightly annoyed, but then trots over to Lady Sayana to ride in her car. Oh dear, the animal thinks it's riding with me. John, dear, did you say that? The cat would give us a tour of the house. Indeed. And you, all three of you would know that Wood was a bit eccentric in life. But this is, this is might new. Have, might have not, do you think you might have not had enough water today? Perhaps you've forgotten to take in some of your pills? Yes? I am. Um, you said I would be rude. Don't worry about me, Lady Sienna. Mittens is very special. I'm certain he is. He can ride with the gentleman where he can be most appreciated. Go on. 
turn to the cat. Either he's crazy. Or maybe some fey fuckery, I don't know. Oh, it's not fey, I assure you. Just, uh, eccentricity a little bit. <laughs> Certainly not fey. Quick, I need to go grab the message you sent me, Sai, just to make sure. <laughs> it's not fey, right? No, it's not fey, it's human. Okay, yeah, okay. Well, the cap doesn't take too much room. Um, if you do not want the cap to sit in the uh, back of the carriage with you. Uh, mittens can certainly sit in the front. I don't want it to spread its cat stink onto the seats. It'll get in there and we'll never get it out. Down, it starts licking their butt, staring <laughs> at you. I like this cat. I like this cat a lot. And I just start... Judging. You should, you should be mindful what you say, uh, Lady Sienna. Mittens is, uh, how how shall we say, uh, very perceptive. Of course, darling. One time, I was working the case. I met a cat that could talk. You sure it's not Faye? I do not know enough about Faye, but I... I mean, it's weird colored. They tend to be... Uh, have like, but don't have like don't Faye dislike um, iron? Fair. I, and uh, Mittens does not dislike iron. That much I know. That's fair. Anyway... Grab my hat, put it on. Pat the general, one of the gentlemen businessmen on the shoulder. Let's get going. I have a mansion with my name on it. Walk out the door. They look a little irritated at the mansion that you already like that that you're a little cocky, but yeah, they they tip their hat to everyone. They say they'll see you at the mansion, uh, at the estate, and uh, they uh, would leave. Leaving Sienna Mittens and um, and Ibir, Nibir, sorry, in the room. I suppose the cat's happy with us then. Ibir, oh. darling, if you could please make sure it's sitting on something at least. Oh, uh, Mr. Nibir, you can take one of the blankets from. Covered over there. Ah, very good. And uh, Nabir will fetch the blanket and uh, fold it primly before um, standing by the door with his case, waiting for Lady Sianna to say her goodbyes. Are you holding it like in your arms or like lower to the ground? Like. In his arms. It's like draped over his arm as if it was a towel. Can Mittens jump up into your arms and onto the blanket? Sure. All right. You swear it's looking at you very smugly and contentedly and laughing a little? And oh, yeah. I, I mean, Nabir is just going to eye roll a little bit. Already works for Lady Siana, so... <laughs> <laughs> And uh, with that, if you don't have anything else to say to Mr. Wood, um, we'll cut to, to the 13-hour drive between London and the estate near Lincoln in the north of England. Over the course of the ride, of course, nothing really happens, but um, Mr. Uh, Armstrong... Talking with the three businessmen, um, you would know that they do not believe in the supernatural, and that to them, oh, boy. yeah, and that to them, ghosts are nothing but the um, 
the product of either an overactive imagination or some sort of sorcery. Um, so I like he walks in. He's like, "You're one of those people, aren't you?" Fun. Okay, I'm gonna be working my bi biography for one of my clients, known as Scrooge. I'll be doing that. Don't talk to me. Um, they um, they will talk among themselves for the most part during the uh, during the rest of the trip. Then, uh, and you get the feeling the more that they talk, they keep being very evasive. But they're looking for something. They're not there for the ghost. The ghost is a pretext. They're looking for something. Well, then, I just heard one of you mention something. What are you looking for? You know, I know you may not agree with me on things, but it's at least nice to share with your guest. Um. Mm. Could I do... Charisma to try and convince them. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, yeah, charisma would work. Um, and I think if you have, um, no, actually, yep, that would be, that would be straight up charisma. And they will communally play a card. Uh, actually, I'll just draw one. How do I just draw, just draw the one card? Ah, there we go. All right. So without knowing more about it, without knowing what their skill are, um, it's at least, you need at least higher than a two. Yeah. Sorry, um, people came inside the room. Can you repeat that? I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, so you can play a card if you want. Right now, I've played a two. So, so long as you have oh. something higher. Oh, yes, I do. I'm going to have them spilling their guts. I'm playing a nine. All right. And what is your charisma? Sorry, what? Uh, your charisma. Oh, my charisma's an eight. An eight, so that's a 17. And in total, they would yeah. have a six. So because you've got more than twice... It is a high success. They indeed spill their guts. Uh, they don't give a shit about the ghost. Wood flounce them with bad investments, with uh, his stingy uh, approach to expenditures and business management. They feel that they... Uh, that he stole from them, that they had, that they would have deserved more, and because of his draconian practices, they could not achieve their full potential. And so they are going to the estate because they have heard through the vines that uh, in his last days maybe coincidentally when the hauntings begin um mr wood would have begun hiding his great wealth in the estate withdrawing everything from the various banks he had deposits in and keeping it all hidden away in the mansion they're going there on a treasure hunt and if you my dear inspector, would like to help them, they can agree to split the wealth four ways equally. So with that, he's kind of tempted to screw over his father-in-law, but on the other hand, he has his reputation at stake. So he's, he's like, I'll think about it. You do that. And um, is there anything, any uh, conversations that the uh, passengers in the other car would like to have during this trip between Mittens, Nabir, and uh, Lady Siana? Or do we uh, fast forward to the estate? Yeah. 
be frozen I again. Uh, maybe. I think so. Am I frozen? So, uh, what? Am I frozen? Uh, well, not anymore. Okay. Oops. Your camera's gone, but we can hear you. While uh, while we wait for this uh, little issue to be uh, resolved, um, we'll go ahead and do our first giveaway in chat before we get to the estate. Um, so please, uh, in chat, uh, I think Katrina is going to give you the uh, information. Um, it is a giveaway for the Cyberpunk Red rulebook as a PDF. So the PDF of Cyberpunk Red, which came out last month. Um, if uh, you would like to enter the raffle, type the word uh, 12 days, 12, 1, 2 as numbers, and then days all uh, together to enter the raffle. And we'll go back to only a state. Thirteen hours later, you make your way to the, um, okay, I'll just move the card there. Uh, you make your way to uh, Mr. Wood's country estate, a large building um, that's been standing for a good 200 years by now. It's an older sort of small, used to be fortified manor house um, near Lincolnshire. It has now been uh, revamped into this once luxurious estate. Mittens, you've lived there for a while, so you already know what to expect. Um, it's a shithole. <laughs> The roof has multiple holes in it. Water leaks everywhere. Some of the windows have been boarded up because um, wood refuses to pay for broken glass. He instead uh, will wait until the window is completely broken down, which you know might never happen. So if there's just a hole or a crack in it, he'll board it up and uh, just leave it as is. Um, some of the stairs in the house are broken. Uh, even out in the entrance, the fountain that was at the center of the uh, roundabout way, the approach, um, is now home to a family of uh, toads that live in the swamp that's there. The fountain clogged up last fall and, um, oh, last spring, sorry, and uh, Wood never bothered to pay for having it repaired. And uh, because his gardener spent too much time trying to repair it and not uh, enough time to work on everything else, he felt that he was paying the gardener for no reason, so he fired him. So now the hedges are growing wild, the grass is almost uh, ankle high. There's weeds everywhere. Um, half of the gas lights around the exterior of the house stop working. Um, the gas pipes inside are clogged up or empty. One of the gas tanks has been empty for so long that it's just pumping air. It's a fixer-upper. Um, it is a cold place. Especially now, more so in winter. Not only that, but despite it all, despite the state of advanced disrepair, this place could be worth a few tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of pounds. So we're talking about, in our world, half a mil to a million maybe even more that you could sell it for or have it repaired and live there if you wanted to live a life of luxury but you need to spend a lot of money and as the coach and the vehicle approaches um, 
a uh, lone figure stands at attention on the porch. Miss Taylor, the charwoman. You recognize her mittens. Miss Taylor is a young, uh, 29 years old maid. She works part time for uh, Mr. Wood. Part time because he does not want to pay her full time. Um, oh. Little tech issue here uh, on the on behalf of Anna. In just a quick second, I'll send her a message. Um, Her Wi-Fi went out, so she'll be back when she comes back. Um, so for in the meantime, I'll, I'll play uh, Lady Sienna if need be, but otherwise she'll be uh, hanging out in the background most of the time, letting Mr. Nadir, Mr. Nadir take care of everything. Well, that's horrible news. Yes. Um, but yes. Mitten jumps out of the vehicle and runs up to the maid and winds around her ankles. She uh, notices you approach and says, Oh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mittens. Hi, how are you? You've been away for a long time. Come here, you. And uh, she starts giving you uh, scritches. I think, okay, if I stand like here, people will see me on the overlay. Hi. Um, we know the cams are are screwing up. Um, the the frames will be back when uh, when Anna comes back. She's restarting a router, so you know, yay tech issues. That said, uh, part time maid. Uh, she bends down. She picks you up, Mister Mittens. If you uh, let yourself be picked up, gladly, very gladly. And Happy she'll purse. just hold you. She'll hold you uh, against her and I'll wait for everyone to uh, come out of their coaches. And as you all approach the porch, she introduces herself. Hello, everyone. I am uh, Miss Taylor. Uh, I am here at your disposal for the time being. Mr. Wood did uh, announce that uh, some of his friends were going to stay here for a few nights. Um, I've... And she looks completely dejected. I've done what I could for the bedchambers on the second floor. Uh, I trust you will all show some leniency. There are a few um, leaks in the house. But uh, on an happier note, um, I did have a few hours today to prepare meals um we will have supper at uh seven o'clock tonight um in the meantime and by the way it's noon ish by the time you uh you arrive um and so she says uh, please make yourselves at home um mr wood told me that you would uh, probably need to have access to all of the rooms so i made sure that all of the doors were unlocked uh, and that you could go about as you please. There are no set bed chambers for anyone. I would just appreciate if you could respect Mr. Wood's privacy and not use his bedroom as the um, as as one of your own. Um, we do. Will I, will I at least get access to his bedroom? I might need it for investigation purposes. Cause... Oh. oh. Yes, yes, definitely. It's just, it would feel weird to have a guest stay in the bed of a man who's also on his no. bed miles away. I understand. I wouldn't touch it with a 10 foot pole myself, but eh. Well, I assure you. Won't you I? When he's not looking, I wash the blankets with whatever little soap we have left. Wasn't saying it was the piss, I was saying it was him. Um, now, uh, as I said, uh, you have access to everything. Please make yourselves at home. 
Um, Mr. Wood did tell me that uh, another person would be coming in, a certain uh, uh, Lord Winters, uh, his notary, I believe. I I've been quite kept in the dark, but I believe there is something about an amendment to his will. Uh, uh, pardon me for speaking out of turn. Please, come in. Excuse no, excuse me, what? Oh, uh, uh, as I said, I don't know enough. He did let me know that Lord Winters, who I know is his notary, would come by. Mm. I simply do not know what for. Well then, okay. Where exactly was the supposed ghost sighting at first? A ghost? It's a long story, sweetheart. I'll catch you up. I could use some food. I walk inside. Yes, uh, by all means. Uh, we, and she just raises like a finger after you, after you've gone past, and she shouts down the entrance hall. Uh, there is also a um, cabinet with uh, strong drinks in the gentleman's room. Good. You'll need one after what I'm going to be telling you. I'm, she just mutters, like, I'm, I'm not supposed to drink. Mittens and nuzzles her yeah. face. I'm, I'm glad that you're here, Mr. Mittens. The place has been a little too eerily quiet. And um, she will show everyone. Um, and, of course, uh, the inspector, if you want to uh follow along or if you don't we'll still do it just purely like a little out of game um but of all the bedrooms that are upstairs would you mind marking which ones that you will uh that you call dibs on and uh for the sake of this game like the businessman will take whatever rooms left So you should be able to draw on the uh, roll 20. Cool. All right. So the inspector is taking a, the middle bedroom, second floor, front of the house, right above the entrance hall. It's the nicest bed I've ever slept in. It's okay-ish. Like I said, not saying much. <laughs> oh. Oh. And um Mr. Nabir, which room would you would you take? And mittens, technically, you can have a whole room to yourself. Which you probably already do in the house. Like, there's probably a mittens room somewhere. It's the morning room where the sun comes in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No matter, no matter how much you try to shoo me out of there, I just, I just ignored that and sat by the window. Oops. <clears throat> and, um, <laughs> Mr. In the beer, you took the bathroom. I, the text was very hard to read. I'm taking the bedroom. <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll I, I, I figured that Lady Sienna would probably take the large bedroom on the uh, far right corner. All right. Yes. Um, I was asking uh, Anna while you were coming back um, which bedroom you want to take. So so far we have one person. Uh, the inspector is going to uh, occupy the bedroom in front of the estate. Um, Mittens is going to be in the morning room. Uh, Mr. Nabir took a uh, a bedroom a little bit farther away on the eastern side of the house. Where do you want to sleep? The only thing that uh, Miss Taylor told you is you cannot have Mr. Wood's bedroom because, you know, 
it's kind of weird to sleep in the old man's bed. I will take the bedroom that Nabir uh, re recommended. Okay. So they will be here, and uh, Anna will be here. So everyone's basically, almost everyone is uh, occupying the front of the estate, which might be uh, important later. You have a few hours, well, at least one, before uh, Lord Winters comes, uh, comes into the estate. Once you're settled, how do you spend this first hour? What time is it? It is currently, uh, you arrived at noon, so it is currently one in the afternoon. Uh, between noon and one, sorry. Okay. So if there's anything that you would like to do, places you would like to explore, the three businessmen, by the way, will <laughs> move to the gentleman's room, and uh, they raid. Mr. Wood's liquor cabinet and cigar boxes. I walk up. Now, may I have these? Would you be so kind as to spare me some cigars and liquor? No. Oh. Uh, Mr. Johnson motions to the uh, the cabinet and says, "By all means, so uh, Mr. Armstrong, take whatever you want. It's not like Wood was here to stop us." Plus, so, if you don't mind me asking, what exactly are you all after? Like, I'm in. What are you all after? Mm. Well, <clears throat> Mr. Mack, the door, please. And uh, Mr. Mack will close the door to the gentleman's room. Before I go into that scene, I would like to know where everybody else is to see if they hear anything or... You know, even just the door closing. Well, if Mittens is in the morning room to make sure it's all still good and secure, I imagine he would hear that door closing. Yes. Yeah, they're being conspirational, conspiratorial, but they're not... They're not going to pay attention to the cat. Mittens would like wander over to the door and like I, do that thing where they I, paw under the door. Mm. <laughs> I would be, however, considering it's my father in law and he always does something. Yeah, this, uh, by the way, since it's your father in law, you would know that he's had mittens for. Well, I think I'll give that chance to uh, to Sai. How long ago did you find Mr. Wood? Well, actually, Mr. Wood found me. And I just got really cozy. Mm. But would you say it's been over, like, four years? Or is it a recent... It's been, like, five or six years. Okay. I've been pretty cozy for a while here. So... There's a lot to explore. <laughs> So you would have probably heard about him having a new cat, um, depending on how uh, long ago your your wife uh, passed uh, Armstrong. But she passed. She passed about two years ago. It's okay. So you would have seen. You would have seen Mr. Mittens. You would know that Mr. Mittens is a a very intelligent and smart cat. Unless Mitten did anything special in front of Armstrong. Oh, no, no, no. Mittens is very cautious about who he uh, talks to at, at the beginning, yeah. Okay, so... I still wouldn't trust the cat. <laughs> <laughs> you can never be too sure. But at least you would know that, um, you know, Mittens has been here for a while. Like, that. that's just... He's yeah. part of the furniture. Um, so we'll get back so to that in quickly. a... Yeah. Sorry. I also say before you shift in, I'm not trying to take over. I'm sorry. Uh, I say I think we should go somewhere more private. All right. Okay, I'll get back to that. I just want to know, uh, Nibir and Lady Siana, where are you going during that hour? So, 
I feel like uh, after they had gotten settled, uh, Nabir would be waiting for Lady Sienna outside of the bedroom and uh, would simply ask, oh, would you like to take your afternoon tea now? Certainly, I think of our company, don't you think? Don't want to be left out of any details in the case of whatever's going on here. Uh, perhaps we should take the the tea in the morning room. Back in. Shall we? Speaking of cats. Shady. My cousin. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, by the way, everyone, while I remove this from uh, my desk, we've reached $1,400 in donations. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, and so as you, uh, as you ask the, the gentleman to, uh, to go elsewhere, um, Mr. O will scoff a bit and say, Be at ease, Inspector. Who's going to tell on us? The cat? And you see the little paw under the, the door. Uh, don't know. My, and... father, my father-in-law has has done very many things to keep his eyes on me. I'd rather not be out where someone could walk up to the door and listen in. Hmm. You have a point. Let us talk outside. And they take their, their glasses, they open the door, uh, and they'll basically leave, and everyone would see them. Uh, mittens, because you're in front of the door, uh, Sienna and Nabir, because as you come down the passageway to the morning room, you would see them cross path with you as they exit to go into the yard. I don't follow. Right? Is there like, um, I'm like, um, give me a sec. I call to use the loo. Right? As they walk outside. All right. Um, I go over to I go over to the lady, and I I forgot your character's name. Give me a sec. I'm sorry. Sienna. Look for my notes. Sienna. And Nabir, I sit down. They're looking for something and want and don't believe in the ghosts and want to get money because, well, as you can tell, my father was a cheap fuck. So I'm gonna prove them wrong. Be the hero. Are you in? So you do believe that there's a ghost? I've literally, if, even if there isn't, go be the hero. Expose them. It proof. Forgive me, but uh, Inspector Richardson, what point would it be for me to play a bit role in your heroic tale? Because uh, I'll cut. I quite frankly don't find anything persuasive about it, and uh, I can assure you that Lady Sienna would certainly uh, not care to take a uh, second billing with you. Imagine this. Come out, right? We split the inheritance. Point to Lady Sienna. You, in whatever circles you go to, get great material gossiped about you, making yourself look great and amazing and wonderful. Point to Nabir, and you might get a raise for whoever you work for. <laughs> or... yeah. Nabir just starts laughing really hard. Oh, gosh, if only. <laughs> You'd at Here's least get some inheritance. Here's another idea. We figure out what's going on, and we get the entirety of the inheritance in the house Sell it, and then we move to somewhere warmer than this dismal place. The both of us together. How about that? Not you and I, myself and the beer. <laughs> well then. And you can take the cat. Oh, no How's lady. that? Go for a lady. You're not really ladylike. You're not very bright. So if you'll excuse me. I'm smarter than you. We shall see. Richardson, how did you treat Mittens back when you used to visit your father-in-law? Oh, I would treat him kindly. 
It's a cat. Why would I treat treat a cat poorly? I like cats. You would treat the cat kindly, but you're super suspicious of the cat. <laughs> Thank you. Not just the cat. I'm suspicious because of the father-in-law, not the cat. Maybe that suspicion plays into it. If it is something supernatural, but I want to be mean to it. Lady Sienna, have you ever met Mittens before? Have you ever seen Mittens at the house? Or have you ever met Wood at the house? Probably. But um, I cannot... I, I have much narcissism. And probably if the cat did anything strange, I'd just chalk it up to being a cat. So... <laughs> Got it. Thanks. Um, as, uh, as this discussion is happening, um, the three businessmen, by the way, are still in the yard. Uh, the doorbell rings. And you hear the footsteps of Miss Taylor going uh, by the passage. Uh, well, since you didn't close the morning room, you would see her pass by the morning room hurriedly. Uh, Miss, Miss Taylor, real <sighs> quickly. Uh, 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 yes. Go. I'll get the door. Take out a bottle. I told you you're going to need to drink. There's a ghost here, apparently. And those men, businessmen out there want... Want to steal all the money of your boss? Pat her on the shoulder. I'm going to go get the door for you. I'm going to play a card. Because there is a rule in Falkenstein about swooning. Yeah. And if you <laughs> overwhelm the poor maid with too much n bad news at once. I forgot yep. about that rule. <laughs> she, you, you hand her the bottle, tap her on the shoulder, go, and she just... Oh my. Uh, and she finds purchase on the wall and, and just looks at, uh, not the wall, but the, the doorstep. Not the doorstep, the door frame. Looking at Mittens, uh, Nabir, and Sienna and say, I, I, think I, I think I need to sit down. Mittens runs I, over. I let out a sigh. I, I start helping her over to a chair. I need a drink, and she just removes the corks, the cork from the bottle, and just. I told you. I told you. Drinks from. We'll go get the bottle. Nabir raises a finger, right. and then just pauses as she drinks, and uh, uh, never mind. I suppose. Um, but your tea, Lady Siana, and uh, so Nabir is going to, um, snap open his briefcase. And it's going to open up with a little bit of a hiss. And then it's going to start, like, the parts inside start assembling themselves into um, a steampunk octopus, like an automaton, with, uh, you know, eight arms. And, uh, you know, it balances itself on three. And all the other arms sort of rise up into a number of different positions, one of which is a, of seating height with a cushion for... Lady Siana, and uh, another has uh, the kettle in which he would start preparing the tea, and then the rest of the things would be um, the various pulses and uh, ingredients that he would use to um, create tea or potions, because he is, in fact, an alchemist. It's just a skill that he does not uh, actually advertise. Um, and he will actually begin to take this moment to um, prepare a special potion for himself and for Lady Siana. Ooh. Um, what is it that you're trying to prepare? Uh, Nabir noticed that the men are outside in the yard, but didn't feel like they could get close to them to listen in. So he's actually going to prepare a Perceive the Universe potion, which would heighten all five senses in the hopes that uh, they can listen into that conversation from within the morning room so long as a window is open. All right. Um, what's, the, uh, what's the target number for that? It's an eight. Eight of what? Hearts. Okay. So... You can draw. Can you draw from the um, magic deck, the one that has like a weird alchemical symbol on it? Is that 
Oh, the spellcaster. So do I have to draw from this if my sorcery is already an eight? It's a great. You would still have to draw one card. Okay. Because it still needs the. It'll take like maybe like twenty minutes. Queen of Hearts. Um. So that's a twelve. Uh. Is it no? Is it heart for? It's heart for the universe. Perceive the universe. Okay, so that brings you to a twenty, which uh, which is uh, double the the amount. So I will give you a choice. Um, you can create twice the amount of potion. You just so happen to have enough to to make four potions, uh, or you still make two, but they work twice as strong. Can I make? Can I make three perceive the universe and one a uh, blinders to the universe, meaning that it would be the provide the opposite bonus or a penalty to uh, the five senses. Sure. Okay. And uh, on that, uh, and that's going to take a few minutes. So Richardson will have time to reach the door and come back. That's that's for for uh, for sure. Um, Detective, when you open the door, the man that stands uh, in front of you, a, I don't know, did that work? You should have a handout on uh, an image on roll 20. Lord Winters, a bearded man with a, a, a fine, not it's not there, of course. Yay for me. Okay, it's in all of your journals now. Uh, richly dressed, black coat, charcoal vest over a white shirt, a striped tie, necktie, uh, walking with a cane, of course, as all gentlemen would. A, a very well-maintained top hat covering most of his uh, receding hairline. He takes his hat off when you open the door and says, Oh, um, I, I uh, apologize for you. Wipes a gloved hand on his on his coat and extends a hand to you, uh, Richardson. <laughs> Lord Winters. I look, I look him up and down. Oh, the, the one in charge of my popping all my popping laws. Uh, uh, will right? Pleasure. Uh, I am Inspector, yes. Inspector Armstrong. Reach out a hand, which is like I look down, like oh, like notice I cut myself on like drop from dropping a bottle, sort of like oh, tear a bit of my shirt off, bandage it up. There you go. Pleasure to meet you. Well, that book pleasure is all mine. Uh, you uh, were sent here by Mr. Wood, were you not? Correct. And also, you may want to come in. Uh, the Missy over there, and I point to <laughs> uh, Taylor. Lots of bombshells. Uh, can I get you a drink? Uh, how many guests have arrived so far? Okay, so here's the deal. Myself, two others, Mittens, friends outside, those three who are doing up to some stuff that you may want to know about, and myself. Oh, dear. <sighs> yes. Um, let's, let's proceed immediately. Uh, would you mind gathering everyone uh, where there's alcohol? I've got plenty in there. Trust me. He, he hastily makes his way to, to, the, um, <coughs> to the gentleman's room. Um, take something from the uh, the cabinet, and then we'll go back to the morning room, seeing that almost everyone is already there. Uh, uh, Miss uh, Taylor, uh, would you mind fetching the other... Uh, the, the inspector here told me that there were other... You, you don't want them here. They're not even here to... You know the conditions and all that. They're, it's a long story. 
I will deal with them. I'll go get them. She's not doing so well. Miss Taylor, don't tell anyone I told you. I'll go get them. And walk outside. I... She looks at everyone in turn. I would like to apologize for what I'm about to say. And Inspector comes back with the three businessmen. I'm afraid that Mr. Wood has not been all too <coughs> honest with all of you. Uh, including you. And <laughs> he looks at the cat. Uh, how do I put this into words? Uh, you have all unwittingly been cursed. I knew it! It was a catch! The three businessmen scoff. Darling, did you say curse? Indeed. Do you, by the way, um, Lady Sienna, do you have your glamour up? Or you look like a fairy lord or fairy lady? No, I assume I have my glamour up. <laughs> okay, so you still, you don't have the pointy ears and the elven traits and all that? Okay. Mm-mm. He um, says, yes, um, how to put it delicately, uh, this is a matter I had warned Mr. Wood about, but <sighs> this house here is haunted. But not the house itself, uh, more like the people that live here, come here. I am still researching the details of this curse. It used to be a pastime for me, and it's becoming more and more of a full-time affair. Um, none of you can leave this property. I am telling you this before everything in England turns to horror. By all means, um, we must, all of us, myself included, I thought I could come here and prevent you all from entering, but We must remain in quarantine here until the curse is lifted. I do realize out of game that this is really, really on topic and I didn't think about it. <laughs> I'm just going to throw up a no card right now. <laughs> um... But yes, uh, and he'll go on to explain everything. Basically, we'll fast forward through most of um, the day. Uh, he'll try to go into the um, details of what he knows. So until basically we'll, we'll do this scene like on the fast forward until uh, supper time. But Lord Winters introduces you to a, a curse by the name of the Ebenezer Curse. Si. Named after the first person who was affected by it years ago in 1834. An old business magnet by the name of Ebenezer Scrooge. He, unfortunately, did not manage to break the curse. He thought he did, and, um, well, the fact that we are still here today and that uh, Mr. Wood was affected as well is proof that the uh, demons responsible for this 
odd magical phenomena are uh, still at work. To make matters worse, um, they latch on to whoever is in the vicinity of their haunt, the place that they inhabit. Wood spent so much time here that the entire estate became uh, their playground. Hmm. Much of his personality in the last months, even year, was due to the uh, um, influence that these ghosts have. And even right now, and he looks at everyone in, in the room, they insidiously work their way into your psyche. Curse needs to be broken before anyone can leave. The three businessmen, once, you know, Winters is done with this whole explanation, which takes hours, will scoff, go and get a new drink, and say that um, these are all children's stories, that none of this is true, and that they will handle themselves by themselves. I immediately speak up. Mm -hmm. You need to shut up. Because of you people, your boss, we are cursed. You are no longer the prerogative. Us four, yes, even the cat. Well, maybe not the cat, I don't know. Are in charge, mainly me. So, turn to the guy who was talking about the curse. What exactly can we do to break it? Unless anyone else has any other words. Beer. Lady. Any questions? Well, if the ghosts only attach themselves to rich magnates, then they must be of some culture. Surely they can be reasoned with. The ghosts! Well, I don't know! Uh, just... No, the lady Idiot. here yeah. has a question. The lady here has a point. Uh, Winter cuts in. Uh, each of them, not necessarily reasoned with, but each of them uh, is born out of a... An unmet desire, or a, a dream, or, or something about Mr. Wood. If we can figure that out, we can rid ourselves of the curse. Has Mr. Wood told you anything... strange about this house? Actually... He told me... That you were all to meet to discuss his will. He told us it was haunted. That we were there to get rid of the ghost. Okay, at least he wasn't a complete ignorant. Um, did he by any chance mention anything about said ghost? Is there any checks I can do or anyone else can do to remember that? He didn't. During the hospital scene, he didn't mention anything. He did say it was a ghost, though. And I think he mentioned something about an apparition. But that's it. Um, then... Uh, yep. I'm not trying to take over. I'm sorry, y'all. Um, is there anything I do since I've known him for a long period of time that I, that he would be like interested in or anything like that? Like any personal unfinished business type thing? Um, 
Yeah, that would be. Uh, we'll go. We'll go with a a a skill check for that. And I think what we'll do. Not even a skill check, actually. Um, can I draw a card? Mm. Yeah, okay, but it automatically shows it. That's the problem. Okay, so what I'll do is I have a physical deck here. Basically, I'll draw a card. If you play a card that's higher than mine, the higher you get, the, um, the more information, like, you know, small details that you would not have thought of it might surface. You know, things that you normally just brushed off to his eccentricity now in light of these new information might mean something else. Okay, I have my card. What do you want to play? A queen. Ooh. All right, queen of uh, which suit? Spades. Queen of Spades. So we'll go with information about his status and everything. Um, he. And you can put it on the uh, on the roll twenty. I'll take care of uh, handing you a new card. Oh my! My apologies. Sorry. Uh, no problem. Sorry. Mm -hmm. I drew a card myself, so I put it on the roll 20. Oh, you mean you drew from the deck? Yeah. Is it a... Oh, I thought a card. No, it was a card from your hand. Yeah, no, I played the card, then I drew from the deck. Oh, okay. Oh, good. Good, good, good. Then you, you did it. No problem. Um, so, yeah. You now that you think of it, um, you remember that uh, he he used to not be this miserly before. Um, you know that your wife's mother used to live with him, and a few years ago they uh, decided to live in two because, of course, they had that two separate estates. She would live her life in one, he would live his life here. And never again did he have any contact with her. All right, I speak up and say, so here's one thing that might help. Only my mother-in-law was Left as he grew greedy and miserly, probably due to the curse, considering its namesake. I'm assuming. I turned to Winters. Is that true? The what? My father-in-law becoming greedy and miserly due to the curse. It might actually have something to do with it, yes. Bingo. So, grew greedy and miserly. Me mother-in-law left him. Might be able to help us determine whatever these spirits represent or whatever. When he says that, does Mittens, like, remember any time uh, uh, Mr. Wood would, like, just talk while petting the cat about his wife and stuff? Things? Uh, specifically his wife or anything in general? Um, well, I guess about the wife. About the wife? Yeah. Um... Play a card of your choice, and I will let you know. Ten of spades. Ten of spades. Um, yes, especially in his later years. So he's been living apart from her for a while. And for when, so the first year you met him, it happened not too long before that. He was still uh, very quiet about her, had the servants take down. You remember, there used to be pictures of her 
uh, paintings and such in the house, and he would have his um, servants take them away and put them in storage. And it's only later on that he would start reminiscing about her, um, especially later at night, saying that he was... Um, um, He he regretted something. He never said what, but he regretted something that he did to his wife. But that he could not change anything. And um and that he wish he wished she would understand. But he never he never spoke exactly of what it was. But something happened to Wood, or to Wood and his wife back then, um, that created a rift between the two of them. And that's about all the information that you remember him. He did mumble a lot. Um, he eventually fired all of his servants except for Miss Taylor. And, uh, but never, ever, that's, that's another uh, detail. He never asked her for anything. Even if the other estate technically is his, he remained in this one, even though it was falling into disrepair. Because he could have just up and left instead of living in a place that he refused to, um, to repair. Siana, Nabir, do you have uh, any anything that, um, that you would like to know about this? Any questions for uh, Mr. Winters or for the three businessmen? Otherwise, Miss Taylor will come and fetch you, saying that uh, it is time for supper. The sun has already gone down. Oh, yep. Oh, I was just going to say that supper seems lovely. So Okay. So the sun has gone down. The house is cooled off by quite a lot. Um, the three businessmen, actually, Mr. O, Mr. Mack, and Mr. Johnson, are currently wearing their coats inside. Um, so cold it is. You are in the dining room. Uh, there is a fire going, which is the only source of light and of uh, warmth in here. And uh, she, uh, Taylor will bring out, according to her, what was left in the pantry. Um, so we are going to have a very light meal. I have uh, the last few quails uh, from uh, earlier that I've prepared for all of you. And uh, it is a, a meager five-star dinner of a quail and vegetables. Winters will not join you for supper. Uh, he will uh, remain. In fact, he'll get a uh, one of the bedrooms. Like the spare room, I guess, next to the nursery. Um, and he'll stay there and try to go through his correspondence with uh, Mr. Wood and try to find something. Anything, as he says. It is during supper that you all hear, without even making a check, uh, you all hear several footsteps. Mittens would recognize, you know, just due to uh, 
being a cat, uh, that there are two people coming. Which, uh, Nibir, did you drink the potions you created yet? Uh, no, he had not had time to, uh, well, I think during the time that the, uh, Mr. Mr. Uh, or Lord Winters was talking, I think that, uh, he would have served the potions, um, with the tea. Okay. Uh, to himself and Lady Siana, but maybe probably would have mixed some of the potion into... A saucer of milk for mittens. Does it does it smell funny? Does it smell like not milk? <laughs> How does the potion taste smell? Um, It, it it would have a bit of a strawberry taste to it. I feel like if it was mixed with straight milk as opposed to tea, it would actually come out like strawberry quick. I downed the whole thing. It's <laughs> <laughs> like sniffs at it and just sort of looks and then wanders off for a bit. Finds a window. Entering into the dining room are two uninvited guests. And the last of our cast. In front of the pair, someone that Mittens and the detective recognize, and someone that even perhaps Lady Siana has seen before. It is none other than Miss Woods, or Miss Wood, sorry, a beautiful blonde woman kept, you know, almost eternally young, quote unquote, because in this game I have to put quotes because it's not magic, but she can afford all the best doctors, all the best foods, and uh, all the best uh, diets that... Um, that one can benefit from in Victorian society. She's wearing a long red, dark red uh, dress right now, and her uh, head, blonde hair is braided, and she's wearing a wide uh, dark pink hat accented with several roses. And behind her is her maid. Victoria Rogers. They will introduce themselves as such anyway. Uh, Rogers is an older woman, black hair, blue eyes, very, um, very elegant, um, but also very, very shy and introverted. She doesn't speak much and she does not look anyone in the eyes. She just barges in, Miss Wood, in the kitchen. What is the meaning of this? What is this that I've heard? That my husband what? is... Oh! Richardson. Is it true? Has well, for one, I mean... he is... Go ahead. He's in the hospital, too. Now that you're in here, you're under a curse, like us. Have fun with that. Mittens runs over and sniffs her. Oh. Hi, you. What do you mean, a curse? I've been married to the cur for uh, nigh on 20 years. I've already been cursed. <sighs> oh, and who I... are you? Oh, two seconds. She looks at Sienna. And who might you be, his new concubine? Oh, goodness no, sweetheart. Absolutely not. Uh, but we are of a similar mind. Marriage is quite the uh, curse. So perhaps we'll get along. Well, if you haven't touched my husband yet, perhaps we will. Darling, no, have you looked at him lately? I mean, I'm sure you have. Actually, no, I've had all of his portraits taken down at my house. Hmm. 
Sorry, Nabir's just going to mutter softly. Oh, that's never really stopped you before. <laughs> He's so funny. You're so funny. Funny. Well, that's just great. We're all here now. Let's have a big sharing moment. Does she smell like she's living and alive? And Yes, she smells okay. like she's an alive person. Okay. Um, in fact, she smells very nice. <laughs> you, you have the feeling that she um, put on some perfume after she got out of whatever coach or car brought her here. Because she doesn't smell like road. She doesn't smell like dust. Or in the case of a coach, you know, slightly smell of horses. Right. Is she there was, anything... Yeah. Anything the old man might have told you, um, Ma, that he might have exactly... might have been bothering him? Basically, there's an Ebenezer curse, which is, you know, Christmas Carol, that biography that was written a while ago. Uh into a greedy bastard. I always die because of it. Uh, you cut off in the middle of that sentence for me. Can you repeat it, please? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Um, well, basically, there's an Ebenezer curse based off that, you know, the biography, A Christmas Girl? Yes, I... The children tale. I'm, I'm, no, it's real. It's real. This part is... The same thing that happened to Scrooge is happening to your hubby. Fuck now. He's dying. So we need to break this curse or that same thing is going to happen to all of us. My um, Siona says that I have no filter. Well, sometimes well it's true. after yeah. you after you were thrown out from your wife's funeral for getting too emotional by this woman and that man, you get used to it. What what wife's funeral? Oh. Well I uh, and she raises a hand both to stop herself from talking and also to you know subtly tell you to not bring that up in front of, like, you know, polite company. Um, she says, so, so there is this curse, I guess. And uh, you are all here because of what exactly? If I stepped in here and I became cursed, then what are you all doing here? Why did you come? He speaks up and says, because he wants us to break the curse. I knew we could talk! There is a gasp coming from her, from Victoria. Miss Taylor is not as surprised. And I don't know how Nabir and Lady Siano react. I mean, Nabir's a cat person. Uh, a lot of wizards are very uh, fond of cats and keep them as familiars, so I would imagine that uh, he would actually respect Mr. Mitten's space. Nabir, did that thing just speak? Not a thing. His name is Mr. Mittens, please. My apologies, I knew he sir. Could, I knew something was up. Well, could you have known that it talked? It just talked. It's been acting like a cat. I saw it licking its asshole earlier. There's no way that anyone could have known that this well, thing was... <sighs> when I'm in New Europa, all oh, this happens all the time. I apologize, sir, Ca Mr. Cat. It's, um, it was all in jest. It was all in jest, sir. Absolutely. Surely. Surely you jest. Okay. 
your surprise at uh, Mr. Mittens talking is immediately followed by to those of you who drank from the potion, you would hear it coming from upstairs. Dangling chains and coins falling onto the floor. It takes a few moments, the sound comes and goes. But the next sound everyone hears, the tolling of a beggar's bell. And this sound actually comes from the uh, drawing room, right across the hall from the dining room. You can all hear it quite clearly. In fact, those of you who took Nabir's potion, the ringing is almost deafening. And Taylor says, no one else was supposed to be in this house. Well, and that's... Like, well, no little Christmas carol. And it's on that that we're going to take a quick break tonight. We will be back in a few minutes, everyone. Stick around as the 12 days of actual play continue with this Falkensteinian version of A Christmas Carol. Christmas tree, oh Christmas tree, your leaves are so unchanging. Oh Christmas tree, oh Christmas tree, your leaves are so unchanging. Not only green when summer's here, but also when it's cold and clear. Oh Christmas tree, oh Christmas tree. Your leaves are so unchanging Oh Christmas tree, oh Christmas tree Much pleasure can you give me Oh Christmas tree, oh Christmas tree Much pleasure can you give me How often have this Christmas tree afforded me the greatest glee. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree, much pleasure can you give me. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree, the candles shine so brightly. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree, your candles shine so brightly. From base to summit, day and night, there's only splendor for the sight. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree, your candles shine so brightly.
Christmas tree, oh Christmas tree, much pleasure can you give me? Oh Christmas tree, oh Christmas tree, much pleasure can you give me? How often has this Christmas tree afforded me the greatest glee? Oh Christmas tree, oh Christmas tree, much pleasure can you give me? Much pleasure can you give me? Christmas kiss. I think I've known for a while. Cause of the way that you make me smile. But a little magic in the Christmas lights is all it took for me to finally realize it. And now I can't keep it quiet. No, I want to shout it from the highest eye. And here's to hoping that you feel the same. Hoping and praying and loving you all of the day. Really, really want to see a Christmas day. There's a Christmas gift I want to send your way. It don't need a ribbon, won't be hard to miss. I really, really want to give a Christmas kiss. I can't believe this is real. Don't need the mistletoe with how I feel. It's true that Santa brings your heart's delight. It would be so incredible to hold you tight. Snuggling under the tree. I really, really want to see a Christmas day. There's a Christmas gift I want to send your way. It don't need a ribbon, won't be hard to miss. I really, really want to give a Christmas kiss. A Christmas kiss, oh, a Christmas kiss. I know that there is nothing merrier than this. It don't need a ribbon, won't be hard to miss. I really, really want to give a Christmas kiss.
Hello everyone, we are back to 12 days of actual plays. Um, just so you all know, we have reached $1,400 in donations for the Trevor Project. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, I would just like to remind all of you that we are doing this for charity, uh, doing this for the Trevor Project, and uh, also that if you want to enter in uh, the uh, 12 Days of Actual Plays giveaways, there is one giveaway that will take place at the end of our stream today, and it also takes place at the end of every day. Uh, disembodied voice of Ethan, correct me if I'm wrong, um, but... Uh, if you have given at least $20 to charity uh, over the course of the 12 days of actual plays, you are eligible to win in those giveaways every day, even though you are not necessarily in chat when it happens. Uh, so if uh, you want to up your chances and also give money to a great charity, by all means, go ahead. We are doing uh, going to get, to do the other giveaway for tonight. Um, so in chat right now, if I know you, we've already begun before break, but if you want to type in again, 12 days, one, two days, D-A-Y-S, all in one word, um, we'll have the uh, giveaway uh, done very, very soon as I uh, hurriedly fill for time talking before we go back into our game. So uh, yes, by all means, go ahead. Uh, give uh, give to the Trevor Project, uh, and and also enter at enter to to, to possibly win uh, great prizes such as the uh, Reaper Miniatures gift card or the uh, advanced reading copy of the Humblewood PDF. If you want to play some awesome D and D in the woods in the form of very cute animals, and I mean very cute. I have the book. The artwork is amazing. Um, it's it's basically playing Redwall, so it's awesome. Um, so make sure to uh, to type twelve days in chat. With that said, we'll go back to our estate. The tolling of a beggar's bell, the cling 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 coming from the drawing room. Miss Taylor pipes up said right before we went to break that they weren't expecting anyone and uh inspector Ta inspector taylor jesus inspector armstrong got up uh and mentioned that you know the the christmas carol had begun what do you do um You probably should all see this, just so you know what's in store for you if you don't break the curse. And Mitten draws off into the room. See? The three, oh, yep. Oh, go ahead. Oh, so I just said, I asked what he meant by see something. I figure whoever is in the drawing room. Miss, um, Mrs. Uh, Wood will follow Mittens along. The three businessmen don't care. They keep uh, eating and talking among themselves. Richardson's going to stand up. With this top hat on, if they are going to end up in chains as ghosts tormented in an endless hell if you don't come with us. I read the book. <laughs> I walk into the room. That's silly. That's what you get for reading books. You probably should go, though. And uh, Nibir will actually assist in helping Lady Sienna out of the chair and lead the way into the room. When we get into the room, I turn to Victoria and say, I don't know what happened between the two of you, but he was always telling me that he wished you would understand why he did what he did. 
or why what happened. I don't know. Something like that. Well, there is nothing to understand. He did what he did because he does not care about people. He only cares about himself. And she abruptly cuts her sentence as she peers into the drawing room. And you would notice a very... Um, a version of, of Mr. Wood. But if he had spent all of his life on the streets. It's, it's very jarring. It's like a, a beggar version of Mr. Wood. Instead of having his, his big mutton chop, it's now a, a wild beard with long gray hair. By the way, he is in the Roll20, if you want to look at him, called Past. Um, he's wearing this mishmash amount of coats together that are uh, stitched with uh, whatever patches of other uh, fabric he could find. Fur from dead rats and squirrels create this sort of capelet around his shoulders. And he's uh, ringing a bell. And he doesn't appear, by the way, he does not appear ghostly. Not translucent or anything. He looks very physical. He seems to not really notice any one of you. Mint. Someone was about to say. Yep. Mint. Uh, like sort of runs to the side and then sits and just patiently waits to see how everyone reacts to this. Who comes in and sees it. Lady Siana. John Deere? Uh, John Deere. He <laughs> does not... He does not seem to notice you. Um, but he does say something the moment you speak up. It should have been so clear, so easy. Why must everything be so complicated? Darling, did you escape from the hospital? I had it all figured out. The plan. The great work. Life. Happiness. And as he talks, he's slowly moving north. And near the end of the sentence, we'll cross through the wall. And now the bell rings, but in the gentleman's room. That's uh, in the morning room, sorry. That's beyond the uh, drawing room. Yes. May I... So may I do... Um, sorcery to kind of, or any other type of skill check to see, like, basically what exactly is going on here, why he isn't recognizing us, what type of ghost, anything like that. Ah, uh, yep, that would indeed be a sorcery check. Um, and even Nabir, if you want to, uh, to try it, you are welcome to try it too, because this would be fairly reflexive. Um, let me just grab the card for me. All right. So you will know that the DC is going to be at least an 8. And sorcery is a um, diamond. So what if I don't have a matching suit? Then the card is worth only one point. And I can only spend one card, correct? Yeah. Which means that in this case, uh, it, would not, it wouldn't be a complete failure. Um, but it would be a failure, I which... Gain. Huh? I gain anything or lose anything? Sorry. 
Uh, no, you just play the card, but you would you would still gain information. It's just that what I will say will not be entirely truthful. And you'll have to pick apart whatever I say. I'll risk it for the biscuit. Uh, two of spades is what I played. All right, and your uh, your skill is a good. Yep. Okay, so that is a uh, a seven. And beer, do you play anything? Um, I'll play one card to make it a nine. Okay. Play five so, spades. Okay, because you already had a uh, an eight. Um, basically, I'll give. Well, it's going to be a bit uh, meta-gamey because you'll both have, you know, the same information. Um, so this is indeed a ghost. This is a ghost that was born out of sadness, of missed opportunities. Um, normally, detective, you've dealt with those before. You know those dead people who cling on to their old lives and will haunt, let's say, the place where they were born or the place where they died. You know, the, the, the classical ghost unfinished. unfinished business, yeah. Um, except that in this case, Wood's not dead. So clearly, this is not a ghost of Wood but you're not quite sure what it could be. The other information that I can give to Nabir is the same that I gave to the detective, except that um, this is, you would know, um, this as a representation of um, an anchor for the curse. So that whatever this ghost, spirit, vision, call it what you will, um, whatever this is, is one of the things that anchors the curse to this estate. So is it an aspect of Woods's soul or psyche? Um, because you succeeded, I'll tell you this. It is not an aspect of a psyche, so much so that it has been whatever this anchor was. Let's say it used to be a, a random generic ghost. It was tainted by Wood's psyche to turn into this representation. So everything that it says, everything that it looks like, everything that it does is more or less a clue, if you will into what this anchor is about. So I don't know if you remember, uh, because in game, the, the inspector also read uh, Christmas Carol. But if you all remember out of game in the Christmas Carol, the ghost of Christmas past shows Scrooge the things that used to make him happy. Except that Scrooge, every time something like that happened, focused instead growing up on the unhappiness of that happening. Well, in our story right now, this manifestation would uh, appear like unhappiness because that's the only thing that Wood would have focused about. So this is something that ate at his consciousness. What it is exactly, you're not sure. Though uh, I'll give that to Mittens to... <laughs> It sounds a lot like his late night rambling that you were familiar with. Yeah. How oh, is he? How oh, is he here? He, he's not dead. You're uh, assuming that it is he. Uh, Lady Siana, I would highly suggest that we follow the spirit. Oh, all right, if you, if you say so, we'll follow the spirit into the next room. We don't have to take the exact route it took, do we? 
seems like a rather solid wall. Well. Okay. The the three businessmen will actually uh, walk up to the wall and begin tapping on it rapping, listening, trying to see if there's not like a, a concealed door or a mirror or that's just wood messing with them. Of course he's messing with them. You know, he knew. He knew about this. You and they turn to... Oh, no, go ahead, Nabir. <laughs> Nabir is going to watch this for a moment and just says, uh, captains of their industry. <laughs> they would actually turn to the inspector and say, you were in league with him. Hey, you, we should have known you well, agreed way too quickly to this. I wanted to make sure, one, I know it's a ghost, it's always a ghost. Two, a little suspicious he was laughing. He's never happy. Three, you all wanted to take his fortune just because he didn't make you happy. He never makes anyone happy. Well, I'm not really quite sure why you would say that uh, he would make other people happy. I mean, usually unhappy people don't make other people happy. Uh, anyway, let's get to the ghost business. So walking to the next room. Um, by the way, Lady, um, Lady Wood will excuse herself from this. I did not come here, she says, to have to deal with my husband's latest eccentricities. Victoria, dear, let's return to the dining room. And that leaves the four um, of you. Yeah. Before, before she goes, I say, did have a spot with you, didn't he? I don't see why it's any of your concern. So the mother to, to someone I cared about, so I care about you. To what extent I care about him. If we can fix this, I motion around. I'd bring him back. Hell, might even talk to him. You in some way, you don't know. I doubt it. And she heads into the uh, the dining room. She'll sit back down if you follow her. Um, but you notice that she will not eat. Like she'll just stare at her plate in quiet contemplation. Um, yes, Nabir. Did uh, Victoria follow um, Mrs. Wood into the room? Yeah. Unless you stop her, Victoria basically tails Mr. Wood everywhere she goes. She's at her beck and call. Nabir would try to make eye contact with her to see if, one, if she knows anything, but to sort of suggest that they should talk later. Um, that's going to require, oddly enough, a skill check. And um, this is strange, but it is called social graces. Because technically servants aren't supposed to speak to each other in the presence of their masters. Um, but there are ways to convey messages sure. when you want to talk in someone's back. Uh, so that would be social graces as a club. Um, I'm not going to play a card on it. So I have the 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 DV in mind. Um, do you play anything? Or what's your rank in social graces? Despite his frankness, his social graces rank is actually a good skill. Ooh. Um, and uh, I am going to play the Eight of Clubs. The DV was a six. Well, I overshot it, but okay. No, that's okay. You get uh, 
double, uh, more than twice the feats DC, so this is a high success. Not only will you motion to her that you need to talk to her, you will also notice as they leave the room, Wood goes out first. You just quickly grab her attention with your eyes, and you see her stare lingers just a second too long on Mr. Johnson. before she leaves the room. Victoria, that is. Well, we're talking about Victoria. Mr. Johnson's one of the businessmen, right? One of the businessmen. The one with the nice mustache, the blue coat. Um, Lady Siana is... I'm assuming that she's under the uh, same potion, or the potion is still active. Mm-hmm. So it will be active for the whole night if you okay. need. Yeah. So that's when that's when Nabir is going to say in a very very quiet voice that only someone with the uh enhanced senses could hear it. But uh I do believe that uh, there's something involved with Mr. Johnson. Really? Well, perhaps we should talk to him then. Perhaps, I um... think that uh, you should talk to him by your lonesome. I would simply get in the way of your uh, ever effervescent charms. And he, he sort of ground his teeth when he said that. <laughs> 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 um, but uh, I believe the I, I believe Victoria might have some information as well. So I will uh, speak with her while you are preoccupied. Excellent. We shall divide and conquer, then. May the best man win, I suppose. <laughs> well, certainly you wear trousers quite often, but, uh... <laughs> you will, uh follow into the other room to see after the spirit. All right. Uh, and Mittens. Yes, Mittens is going to run, well, not run. What does a cat do? Trot? Um, I guess. Right? <laughs> uh, and just follow behind Victoria. And when mm -hmm. they get into the room, they're going to curl up with Miss Taylor for a bit and just keep an eye on the room. Okay. You you can see uh, a bit like I told uh Drist earlier, you can see that she that Mrs. Wood does not touch her food, that she seems to contemplate something, stares at her plate. Um Victoria is behind her, standing tall at uh, at attention. And um Miss Taylor, for the first time tonight, especially with all the talk about ghosts and all that, now that she heard, think you have the feeling that she never spent the night at the house. Um, and she is visibly uncomfortable. Turn on my lovely purring kitty charm. <laughs> Um, and ask if she's okay. Are you okay, Miss Taylor? You seem unsettled. Uh, it's what this lawyer man said. Uh, I, I have a child to go back to at home. I, I can't stay here. I can't remain indefinitely in this in this place and and what's he doing upstairs anyway uh, i i don't like any of this mr mittens i don't like all of them strangers walking about the house this this cannot end well i hope it ends well so you can go back to your child. I didn't know you had a child. All this time, I didn't know that. Surely you must have spoken of that before. Huh. Uh, actually, Mr. Mittens, she... 
Yeah, she never spoke of him before. What's your uh, child's name? Uh, Tim. Oh, how old is your Tim? Oh, uh, he's six. But the doctors say, um, doctors say he might not live more than uh, to the age of 12. That must feel horrible. I have tried you, this. Hmm? You've been here with Mr. Wood. Was, has, have you been here with Mr. Wood longer than I have? Yep, she was already there. Um, yeah. She used to be full-time back then. Right, so you've been with Mr. Wood a long time. Surely you've heard him speak of something that upset him. I mean, he was constantly mumbling about something he regretted, but it was never clear, you know? <laughs> Maybe if you could remember, it would help us figure this out so you could go home to Tim. I never pegged Mr. Wood to have a conscience. It was his... the way he spoke. And it was his thing in life that, you know, everyone should fend for themselves. And, you know, the law of the jungle and all that. In fact, I was actually astonished uh, to see you here. Figure he must have gotten lonely with age and needed companionship because it wasn't like him to help others, care for others. Mind you, he's not the one that fed you and cleaned up after you. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, but thank you. I appreciate it. Sorry. I have to clean after Mr. Wood, too, you know? And he's a grown man who should know how to fend for himself. Anyway, I have to clean up. You can keep me company if you want to. I'll try to remember anything in the meantime. And she'll basically go to the table, pick up like the uh, the dishes and everything, and bring them back into the kitchen. Um, we'll just circle back around to the um, wait. Which room are we into now? The morning room. The oh, morning room, yeah. Yeah. Um, into the morning room. Mr. Nabir, Lady Siana. I assume the inspector follows as well. The ghost is now in that room. He looks about and says, This should have been a place of life. Instead, everything just turns to ash. Everything I touch rots. I have to make sure of that. My influence does not reach beyond. I have to keep everything. Where did everything go wrong? How? How did everything go wrong? You. So. Yep. Sorry. Don't continue. Okay. He says, you. And he points his bell at just empty air. <laughs> it's all your fault. You've been sinking your claws into everyone and everything. Holding onto them like so much chains out of Carceris. You. You should not have appeared into my life. 
Be gone. Be gone. And his image fades. So I think I know what he might have said to his wife. The three of you are left in an empty room. You think that was in reference to his wife? A lot of mine. I suppose the only thing to do is to ask her. The only way to decipher. The, oh, the three businessmen eventually come up, having not found any secret doors or anything. Oh, where is the old man gone? Asks Mr. O. Smoke and mirror, I told you. Johnson replied. The, the last time, as a professional... I'm going to ask you nicely, please. Keep your mouth shut. Let the professionals, I point to myself and the other two, do the work. You are now professionals in what stage magic? Fine. Have it your way. We'll, <coughs> we'll be in the lounge before heading up to bed. Tomorrow, and they look at you, Inspector. Tomorrow is when our work begin. And what work is that, gentlemen? A, a business things. Nothing that would interest the, a lady of your status. They plan on stripping this place clean to look for some treasure. You really? are... I assume it is. Not so much for discretion, Inspector. Uh, would you gentlemen pref would, would you gentlemen like a uh, wake up call in the morning? Then I would be happy to provide that service for you. Why? Thank you very much. Your name was Mister Nabir. Mister Nabir. Yes. Five a.m. sharp. Thank you very much. I can certainly arrange that. And, uh, Lady Siana, if you excuse me for a moment. Certainly. And, uh, he is going to go up into his bedroom and, uh, begin to make a few more uh, potions. Oh. Which ones this time? He is going to make universal adhesive. Uh huh. <laughs> What? I, I don't... No, I don't know what you... No, no, keep, keep, keep going. I want to see where this is going. Yeah, he's just going to take some... Uh, make some universal adhesive for now. And then... Um, he, he's going to, after that, uh, make a uh, divination potion. Okay. Um, the universal adhesive is going to take um, an hour though you won't need to be next to it. So once you start the process, you just need to leave it there for an hour, whereas the Divination Potion uh, will say it's 20 minutes per card. Uh, what are the DVs for each? So the Divination Potion, it says the uh, it, it can be anywhere between 6 and 8. Um, and then the second, the Universal Adhesive is also an 8 diamonds 
Okay, so you would you would be able to you'll just burn through cards basically. Um All right, then you'll need to stay in your room for about 20 minutes. Sure. Um but then afterwards the adhesive you can um you can let it boil and simmer. Uh, by the way, for all the time that you spend upstairs, you would hear coming from the spare room um the sound of chalk on the wood boards. Someone's writing on the very floor of the room. Could you ping on the map which uh, room you were referring to? This one. Ah, okay. Which is basically just the wall beyond yours. There's a closet um, for the housemaid. Um, so, like, that's their... Um, sort of a, a storage space. Okay. Like when uh, when Miss Taylor used to live there, that's where she would keep like most of her things. And she would have a, uh, in this instance, she would actually have a bedroom in the, um, in the estate. There weren't any servants quarters outside or anything. Um, but you don't know where exactly she would have had her, bedroom before because she's not been working full time for a few years. But yeah. So it's right beyond this empty closet so you can hear it quite well especially with your enhanced senses. Back downstairs, mittens, you would see Miss Taylor go back and forth between the kitchen and the uh the dining room, taking plates and bowls and utensils away and bringing them into the uh the big sink that they have and you know washing the dishes um what's your perception score like mr great Mitten? great great is a an eight let me see would you like to play a card sure I played a Joker. Holy shit. All right, so Joker is worth 15, so you got a 23. That is twice above... Actually, it is not twice above her 16, um, but it is one and a half times above it. Is it uh, 15 plus 8? That's 23. No, one and a half would be uh, 24. So it's just a success, but you will still notice as she does the dishes, that um, she washes like utensils in a bunch and just quickly and subtly slips a fork into her uh, sleeve. And she keeps doing the dishes, and later on, it's a spoon. And later on, it's another fork. Once that she's strange utensil style. Huh? But yeah, she she seems to be uh, squirreling away the silverware. Are we currently alone in this room? Yeah, the two of you are alone in the kitchen. I jump up to a shelf where I can watch, and then after I've observed this, ask Shirley, you have silverware at home. You don't need to take silverware. Why are you taking silverware? Uh, I'm I'm not taking silverware. That must have been a glint in your eyes. I assure you, everything is, is here. I would not steal from Mr. Wood. Why would I steal from Mr. Wood? Just told me your son is six and may not live very long. You used to work here a lot. You don't work here so much anymore. Everything okay? Hmm. 
she takes a stack of plates and as she moves past you to put them away in a uh, uh, in a cupboard. She just says, well, we all have to fend for ourselves. I don't have enough to put food on the table. I don't have enough to pay for Tim's medicine. It's not like Mr. Wood is going to miss some of this. He never has any guests anyway. This is the first time in over a year that we've used the silverware. Why would you care? You're a cat. I've always been a cat. No? No. I used to be human like you. Please tell me this isn't going to turn into some morality story where you said that you stole something and then became a cat. No, I did something far worse. And then was cursed into a cat. Oh. Punishment. I'm... Sorry. Yeah. There's a lesson in there, I'm sure. Maybe. Well, if I can help you out, I will. But I also need to make sure that Tim and I are taken care of. Did you ever talk to Mr. Wood about it? I don't think he would listen. Mr. Wood refused to talk about my pregnancy. He would treat me like I wasn't even pregnant, force me to work. Then why did you stay working for him? Why not find someone different? Because at least it was steady work, and I figured at some point John would like to meet his son. I don't know how a cat looks shocked, but the cat looks shocked. Well, you know that like cat meme? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Wood has a son. Oh. Is that what he regrets about his wife? Is... But then why? Wow. Do you still love Mr. Wood? Did you love Mr. Wood? I don't know where to start with this one. We'll pause on that and move to the morning room for a moment. With our, with, uh, we'll say that by this time, um, yeah, uh, and the beer will be done with the potion. So you can go about on, uh, on your way. Do you go back downstairs or do you want to have something happen upstairs? Just so I know where you are, uh, when we start the next scene. Yeah. So once the, uh, universal adhesive is complete, he is going to, um, sneak into the bedroom that the uh, three gentlemen are sharing. Mm -hmm. And he's going to open the windows quietly and then apply the adhesives to um, the windows so that they would seal shut. Mm -hmm. um, and then he will pocket the rest because uh, he's going to apply some to the door later, but he doesn't want to do it quite yet. I see. All right. Um, while you're off doing your completely um, understandable plan, 
uh, Inspector and Lady Siana, you find yourselves in the morning room. Again, uh, the three businessmen have left. They went back to the uh, to the uh, lounge. Um, the sorry, on the map it's called the gentleman's room. Victoria and uh, Lady Wood are in the dining room, and you can hear the sound of like dishes being washed and all that coming from the kitchen. What do you both do? The sound of the bell, by the way, is all but gone. I'm just quickly gonna walk towards, start walking towards the kitchen. Okay. In that case, I will head towards the gentleman's room. All right. Um, we'll start with the gentleman's room, and I'll move to um, the inspector afterwards because on your way to the kitchen, there something's gonna happen. Gentleman's room. The three of them are sitting again in their what should have been comfy chairs, but that have been eaten and torn. A, a certain cat has probably made his claws on um, the nice leather high back chairs that are in the gentleman's room. Really great sensation when you dig your claws in. I know, right? Yeah. It, just, it pulls just right. Oh, it feels so good. <laughs> um, the three of them are talking. They've got their hats off. Uh, and when you enter, they turn to you a bit smugly. And Johnson asks, Oh, are you lost, Lady Siano? Well, perhaps just a little. I was actually hoping that you might um, give me a little bit of information about this house, Mr. Johnson, if you wouldn't mind. I had hoped to speak with you on some matters. He looks to the other two and puts his uh, brandy glass down on a low table and says, Gentlemen, if you would excuse me, uh, one needs to act comme il faut. And uh, he'll approach you, basically just like gently guide you back into the lobby, close the oh, door. Such a gentleman. Oh, well. One's must. How can I help? Well, I knew Mr. Wood only slightly, not quite as well as I would give on or would have hoped. And I was wondering if you might be able to tell me a little bit more about him. Something that was something that you knew of him? As, as his business associate, I'm sure that he must have shared some things with you. I just feel terrible that we're having to deal with this curse of his, and I I just wish I could help. Oh. Lady Sienna, don't tell me that you buy into all of this supernatural nonsense. Fairies are a thing. Hmm? I just, I don't know what to think. What with that apparition showing up and looking so frightful and all. I'm not going to ask you to play anything. You play your cards right. And you notice, like, his countenance changes that, you know, she needs a, a strong man to, to protect her. And he's like, oh, 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 oh. Um, he says, well, if anything, uh, Lady Siano, I can protect you. These apparitions are probably nothing but cheap tricks meant to scare us away. I, well, the detective spoke about it. Um, I believe that Wood knew what we were looking for in this house. It's just all a charade to teach us a lesson. You have nothing to fear. But if it can reassure you, it can show you around, or I can uh, provide in any way you would see fit. I would love it if you would show me around, show me some of the more important places to him in this. If you would. 
Mm. Well, I believe his most important room would be his bedroom. Oh, really? Why, according to... And he's going to talk as he motions for you to, like, go upstairs and walk with you. Um, okay. He would offer you his arm to lock yours uh, with oh, it if you want. Thank you. And, uh, <laughs> of course, <laughs> he talks about how, you know, it's not surprising that the bedroom would be his most important room. It is apparently, according to rumors, the place where he spent all of his time and never came out of. It's where the, um, it's where they found him before bringing him to the hospital. Well, we've been told that we can't leave the house because of some something preventing us from leaving. But if he was able to leave the house, then perhaps we have a choice or we have a chance as well. Do you think? You do make a good point. This strange lawyer fellow did come in saying that we were all quarantined here and yet John is in London. Huh. Humbug. Well, it makes very little sense. Do you know of anyone who might want to frighten his associates? Was there anyone that he didn't get along with in life? Oh, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm sure he's still alive, but you know what I mean. Whilst he was living here in this house. I will need you to make a check at okay. this point. Um, I guess you can go with... Um, because you're, tr you're trying to seduce him into giving you information, right? Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, which, I, I, there are many skills. But um, I, I'll, I'll give you, what, what are your skills right now? What are you good at? Um, I have a great charisma. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't. What other? I have good social graces. I'm not sure what else. Would be no, I think yeah, I think a great charisma would work. Um, okay. Play your card. Okay. Charisma is a heart, correct? Yes, charisma is heart. So I'm. How do I play my card? Do I drag it onto the? Uh, yeah. You choose it, okay. uh, and then you drag it on. Okay. I'm going to play a five of hearts. Yeah. Five of hearts, and you have a great charisma. So mm -hmm. that's a 13, and he only has a nine, because it's not the right Ooh. suit. So he says, um, as you enter the dilapidated bedroom of, of Mr. Wood, uh, several buckets have been put on the floor to catch the rain coming in from the holes. Um, there is a, a, a mound of various colored wax in a corner. He's basically um, picking up like leftover of candles everywhere and meshing them together to make like a big candle. Uh, and he even has in his own fireplace, like little remnants of coal. Again, things that he would have picked up on the streets and all that and, and brought home. And that's how he warms himself, not to use wood. And uh, Johnson, being a, a, a gentleman, would... Uh, enter the room with you, make sure that everything is, is safe, and then lean on the fireplace. He's assuming a dominant posture. Well, if you need to know, Lady Siana, there might be a small quarrel between him and his wife, his estranged wife. Nothing that you should be concerned about, of course. 
well, goodness. I would never have guessed. What was the quarrel about, do you know? Well, some say that Lady Wood found herself a lover. A very strong and potent lover. Lady Wood did. So it was nothing that Mr. Wood did then that caused the rift. Hmm. I don't have all of the information on that, unfortunately. Gossiping is a, a lady's pastime. Oh. This is... He was your, your associate, at the very least. I would assume that you would be privy to some of his matters, Mr. Johnson. I am privy to some matter, Lady Sienna, but... I need to know, why are you here? Oh. I was hoping to get myself a new place to live. He offered the house and, well, I had no idea that it looked like this, you must understand. So, of course, I have no interest in the place anymore. I just want to get out of here, but it seems I'm stuck here until the end of this horrific trial, whatever it may be. I just want to know everything I can to get myself out of here as quickly as possible, sir. If you could help me with that, I'd be most grateful. Well, Miss... Uh, lady, I apologize. Uh, lady That's Sienna. Right. Uh, I... I am that lover. Oh my. But, you know, Miss Wood and myself aren't an item yet. Yet? Well, things can always change. And he looks at you with bedroom eyes. Oh god. <laughs> which, which, by the way, the DM cannot do. I, I, I don't. I, I can't. If I do bedroom eyes, it's just. Oh, <clears throat> oh, I'm sure you'd be able to more than provide for me, Mister Johnson. But I was more interested in matters that may have occurred before the poor man was taken out of the house. Something that might have caused uh, someone to be upset with him, and perhaps set these things in motion that would cause all this trouble for all of us? Would you believe it if I told you, Lady Siana, that if Mr. Wood is cursed, then Miss Wood is indeed blessed. And I think de facto, so am I. Oh, I might have to say you are very blessed, from what I can tell. But what does it mean in this context, as for Lady Wood? He, he loosens his cravat a bit. I... Well, Lady Wood and, and myself had a... Uh... An affair, let's call it what it is. But uh, that was because Mr. Wood was distant and cold, amongst other things. It just so happens that um, Lady Wood caught him having an affair with that governess downstairs. Oh my. And well... We capitalized on this, and, uh... And managed to... Well... Almost to get the divorce that she wanted. Almost? 
I do not know why John refused the sign of the Force. Some men are just stubborn. Yes, but enough about... Wood. Why did you bring me up here, Lady Siana? Well, Mr. Johnson, you did tell me that this was the most interesting room in the house, and I have to agree. But I believe there's too many people awake at the moment for it to be quite as interesting as it could be. Perhaps later tonight, after everyone has gone to bed, we can convene back here and see just how interesting the place can be. Just a quick DM aside, he's going to be so fucking pissed that the door has been nailed shut later. I know. <laughs> uh, he says, oh, indeed. Let's wait a few more hours. I am uh, what people would call a night owl. Anyway, let us make haste back downstairs. We wouldn't want anyone to have any ideas. Oh, of course not. We wouldn't want them thinking ill of you, would we? Uh, you go uh, ahead. Uh, no, uh, noblest of liege, after you, lady. Oh, all right. I always enjoy coming first. And she will make her way down the stairs. He will stare at your ankles. <laughs> uh, <laughs> back downstairs. That was that was awesome. <laughs> um, back downstairs, detective. As you were walking to, uh, give me a bit. I, I need a moment. <laughs> no problem. No problem. Uh, I see, okay, I see that I'm chat good, yeah. chat is having a good time. Uh, <laughs> when you're moving All from right. the gentleman's room to the kitchen, uh, you would notice as you pass through the passage, um, detective, there's an exit that leads into the yard. So that's basically the way that you, you went to get fetched uh, the businessman earlier. Um, but you would remark, moving by, walking by, that uh, out of the corner of your eye, there is someone standing outside in the middle of the yard. A giant of a man. Easily seven feet tall. Red-headed, big beard, like a Viking. And yes, I could not use anything else for the Ghost of Christmas Present than the one from The Muppets Christmas Carol. Of course, of course. But yes, he he is there uh, in in the the yard. Um, Again, like the other apparition, oblivious to you. He just wanders the yard outside. You know, all just walking in a circle, uh, calling out Do to... Do I me. hear him from... Oh? Oh, continue. continue I was just going to say, from... yeah, he's, he's shouting for the children to come home. The thing is, however, is you hear it only when you're looking at him. So you caught sound of what he was saying the moment he was in your peripheral vision. And you, you see him, you know, he's walking, calling to the children, but the moment he's out of your line of sight, because of course you're, you know, looking at him from the passageway. So the moment he disappears from the passageway, there's no sound at all. Okay, I'm gonna run down to the kitchen. Mittens, Victoria, um, Miss Wood, I need you all to come with me now. 
There's a ghost outside. Uh, Victoria, dear, would you mind going to take a look at it? Lady Wood will remain in the dining room, but Victoria, Miss Taylor, and Mittens, do you follow as well? I see that uh, the lady does not move. I do not follow. I stay with the lady. All right. Okay. So, uh, Inspector, you and um, Victoria and Miss Taylor will move to uh, while to the yard. Down the hall, I'm making yep. idle chatter. I make idle chatter like, what else could have happened with his wife? What, an affair and a murder? Um, yeah, the Ghost of Christmas Present is actually digging out a corpse from the yard. No. Um, but he's calling for the children. And when you step outside, he seems to have heard you. The, 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 your footsteps on, like, the hardened, um, you know, cold grass. And he turns and says, Ho! Oh, Ho, 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 ho! You are not the children. Well, what I mean, are you like, doing here? Where's Wood? Which Wood? Margaret's, uh, um, Miss Wood or Mister? And also, uh, I've read the book. I know your deal. Uh, thing is, Mr. Wood's dying. My, this is bad news indeed. I, I am here to collect on the children. What do you mean? Mm, well, Mr. Wood is indeed dying. He does not have long if he wishes to lift the curse. You've read the book, then. You've... This... Dickens really did a number on me. I'm supposed to be jolly well, and how good... How do exactly do we... Oh, uh, 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 if you want to get down to the... A business minded like wood you are. Uh, I am looking for uh, two children he adopted. Want in ignorance. They're somewhere in here. They've ran away. I believe me, I would like to lift this curse off of wood. It's Fast as possible. Before he, and he points to the sky, decides his turn. Oh yeah, no, I don't want to face the future. No, no, no. Um, Victoria does actually stare up in the sky. And she screams out a scream that everyone in the house can hear. Mittens would go running. What about the other two? You just hear me say. Everyone runs outside. Even the businessman, Johnson, uh, walks, you know, faster. A, a woman screamed. Of course he's walking faster. Uh, when you go outside, a figure draped in tattered robes. Oh no, great. Now it's gone forever, I guess. What the hell? Hmm. Thank you, uh, roll 20. I'm trying to show you something, but it might not work because I clicked on the wrong button. So, uh, well, tattered robe, desiccated wings, 
and just a single human skull at the top of it all. This strange ghostly apparition. Larger than elephant. Is hovering above the house. The robe itself billowing in the wind like it was underwater. It just staying there. So we are living in the amount of time until it strikes midnight. Where we want to, where where the kids where. Everyone's just looking around, uh, confused. What what kids? Him, one of the kids. Turns to the. I, what were the names again? I turned to the. All. Want. Uh, is he still there? Yeah, they are called want and ignorance. All right, I think I know what's going on here. Want, I think want is the want to have his wife back. Ignorance. I don't know ignorance. Does that sound about right? I asked the ghost. <sighs> Metaphorical or literal? It, it is a bit of both, but... I guess you're on the right path. You do describe things that my children would do. What if there was some sort of affair or something? Having a child that they don't know about, would that be ignorance? What now? Turn to the cat. Wood has cat. a son. Don't they have a brother in law? Victoria looks at you now that she's past the shock of seeing death upstairs or uh, up above the roof, and she turns to you and says, do not mention that to Mrs. Wood, please. Also, why am I talking to the cat? I'm going crazy. I need something to drink. And she goes back inside. I walk, you know, I grab her. Uh, Put your shit together. You're going to go, we're all going to die if you don't calm down. Because that calms people down. Do you have the uh, skill leadership, uh, uh, Inspector? Check. Uh, I'm trying to check. Give me a sec. No, it's average for me. It's average? Would you like to play a card to try to calm her down? Yes. What suit is it? Uh, leadership is uh, heart. I don't have Can heart. I assist? Is assisting possible? Can, can the cat assist? Uh, so if if someone assists, what happens is uh, we are going to use um, the lowest card out of the two, but the lowest in number. Not gonna... So meaning that if you play oh. like, yeah. So if for you yourself, in Inspector, you play a card and it's worth only one point because you don't have anything. Uh, but it's in fact, I don't know, the Jack of Clubs. And Mittens has a uh, Ten of Heart. Then the Ten of Heart will be used. And that makes it. Okay. Can I ask, am, I allowed to, am I allowed to ask what card? Are we allowed to share what cards we have or no? Okay, we can share. Yes, 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 I, yes. I was I've, muted. I've got. I've got the king of spades, four of spades, four of clubs, and seven of spades. Uh, queen of clubs, three of hearts, and ten of clubs, and a joker. The joker would win regardless. Okay, play the joker. <laughs> Is this really want to use the joker? If you want to. Uh, nah. It's up to you. I'm going to say it's up to you. All right. Did you have any hearts at all? No. I, I mean, I can play my seven of spades, and then we can go with the hearts. And if I have a leadership skill, does that change anything? Uh, yes, you apply your leadership. Okay, then I'll play the three of hearts and do my leadership skill at good. Ooh. And I'll play 
Seven. Oh, seven of spades shows the wrong one. My bad. Uh, I meant to play four of clovers. All right. Um, number to beat is a uh, seven. Sorry. What do you have? Uh, you said plus three, whatever that is. Oh, that's that's a nine then. Yes, you you managed to successfully calm down uh, Victoria enough that she uh, says, I, I, "Can we go back inside? I do not want to stay within sight of this grisly thing." Okay, so. Walk inside. Oh, team meeting. Team meeting, everyone. Everyone go get everyone else. Team meeting. Emergency meeting declared in the dining room. Yeah, pretty much. The, um, the three businessmen will um, decline invitation to the meeting. That was enough for tonight. They are going to retire. Really, the longer this lasts, the more they seem to be pissed at being there. Okay. Sorry. So I'm are gonna... all... Oh, wait. Sorry. Yeah. Are all three of them going up at the same time now? Yes. Johnson, Johnson wants secretly everyone to go the fuck to sleep. So he believes that if if he goes and like all three of them go, you might do like have your meeting and then everyone will split up for the night. That's that's his plan. Okay. He is going. Uh, Namir is just going to wait a moment and uh, wait for them to settle in their room before he follows them up quietly. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's going to pause. Then knock on the door and open it. I'm sorry, gentlemen. Uh, what time was I supposed to awake you? And as he's doing that, he's going to secretly apply the glue to the uh, door frame. Mr. O turns around just, just long enough for him to say, 5 a.m., we said. A uh, thousand pardons, gentlemen. I seem to be hard of hearing. Also, uh, English isn't my first language. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Just make sure that we're up. Of course. And you finish That's gluing up the... Then, and... Uh, yeah, then he'll you... shut the door. All right. Um, how long does Universal Adhesive last? It doesn't say, but uh, I, I, I figured it would be based on whatever it is I draw and play from the spell deck. Yeah, we'll say that. Okay. Um, so I'm going to play Joker. <laughs> All right, then uh, we'll say that it will last forever. So they'll be forced to break down the door. Oh, if no. Get out. oh no. They are stuck they in there. The <laughs> I mean, they can jump the window if they, you know, break through the glass. Oh, yeah, it's just the second floor of a country estate, you know, it's probably like 20, 25 feet up in the air, if not more. Yeah. Oh, that's true. <laughs> so, um, you, you go do that. Meanwhile, everyone will gather around. Uh, Winters will also come down um, with a few papers in his hands and attend the meeting. I'll know how to break the curse. How? Ghost of Christmas present. You need to get him something that represents want and ignorance. Right. Two Are they actual children? What about these two? Um, Winters would say, I believe that uh, th 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 these sh uh, um, <clears throat> I believe they're not physical children more like metaphorical 
So one of them has to do with, I point in this words, her. I'm assuming that's want, because he wants that, all that. Ignorance, Elevano. Probably an affair or like a hidden child or something, like the cat said. Ah. It, it, and, uh, that's when Nabir is going to actually come back down the stairs. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you'll have a you'll have a tea set in hand. Ah, ignorance. I find it ironic that uh, it puzzles you so. And uh, as he's doing that, he's going to uh, serve Lady Siana the uh, tea laced with the uh, potion of divination. Oh, thank you, Nabir. I think it is hardly the time for jabs at one another. I don't want to go crazy like, like, my, like, like the old man. Let's find these children. Any of you happen to know, like, any secrets that man might not have been aware of? Anything of that sort? Something that would have happened to him, but he would have ignored it? Or not been made aware? Exactly. That. I like you a lot more than him already. With the tea in hand. Yeah, what does Divination do if she drinks it? So... The way that uh, Nibir made it, he made the tea to sort of open the third eye a bit to um, see ethereal presences or any um, essences left behind by um, spiritual things, just to maybe find any clues that might not be out in the open. But uh, you know, see something in certain rooms if you know they can't really perceive the spirit. It's fifth physical manifestation. Wow, it's a good thing that you didn't do that uh, when we started the game. So, Lady Siano <laughs> would see this on the shoulder of everyone, maybe everyone, present here. We'll get back to that. There is a small child. Think like a garden gnome, sitting. Um, But on the shoulder of Miss Taylor, of Mrs. Wood, there is a second child. Now, I need to know something from the player. This is going to be a bit meta-gamey, uh, but in the interest of time. Are any of you here for your own selfish reasons? Or are any of you actually willing to help Mr. Wood? Willing Honestly, to help I dunk, on, I dunk okay. on him a lot, but I kind of feel obligated, like, out of some form of love, since he gave the blessing for me to marry. It's it's selfless. Gradually so, but it's selfless. Money, 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 money. And <laughs> <laughs> Nabir is um, obligated to be here because he is employed. The same goes for Victoria. Um, and so everyone except Mittens and uh, the inspector. Everyone is at least one child, but Taylor and uh, Mrs. Wood have two. That's what you see. And oh, by the way, all the children are staring at you. They know you can see them. (laughs) Wait, so do I have children on me or no? No, you have none. Oh, You and Mittens have none. Oh, I don't like children under the best of circumstances, but this is downright frightening. Mrs. Wood and Miss Taylor, I believe you might have something to share with the party that would be important to this particular matter. 
Miss Wood turns to um turns oddly towards uh Miss um uh, Miss Taylor and says huh, I bet this harlot has something to hide. Oh don't uh don't cast stones when you're living in a glass house, dear. I don't think you're much better than her. Oh please. I have class, I have standards, I have education, I have money. And I did not have to sleep with a decrepit old man. Mistress Creep. Miss Taylor is almost crying, but when you bring up the lecherous creep, she like wipes her eyes and looks at you. Do you know something, Lady Siana, that Would you say that Lady Wood is not as saintly as she thinks she is? <gasps> oh my, I think saintly is quite a stretch. Well, I was going to let the lovely lady speak for herself, but as she's had the um, good fortune to insult me before going here, I believe I'd like to tell her myself. The Honourable Mr. Johnson, was it? Gave me quite an earful about your... Um, little circumstances, Miss Wood? Would you like me to go on? Would you like to explain? Johnson is nothing but a business uh, contact of mine and Mr. Wood. Oh, really? There must have been a lot of business going on in that upstairs bedroom, then. Oh, she's angry! <laughs> <laughs> Mittens, even from uh, your. Uh, where are you on the floor or are you like somewhere high up, Mittens? I'm a cat. I'm up high. <laughs> okay. You would see from up high that she's um, like her hands are almost under the table and she's just um, uh, clutching at her dress and. Um, um, oof. like playing with the ham of it she's very angry and she's like <laughs> you would cast blame left and right because you want to own this property Lady Sienna call Mr. Johnson what, what? she will tell you everything hold on a fucking minute you were cheating on the old man? I wasn't. If you don't want to take my word for it, take the word of a gentleman. Ask Mr. Johnson yourself. I never lied to him. He tried to raid this place. I trust her. And I point to... Um, sorry. I point to your character. I point to Lady Yana. Savannah. And I say... Yeah. I say, I trust her more than I trust him. Now I trust her more than I trust you. Richardson, dear. Family needs to stick together. You uh, would trust yeah. this. Why have this... you lived apart for so long? The cat said. Because he cheated on me with her. And she points to Taylor. What if it's not such a clear cut? thing but if there's more to it did you listen why would i listen he would remained unfaithful after promising after signing contracts and all that it doesn't matter he slept with this peasant and so contracts no no contracts what do you mean the covenant of marriage, of course. I want no, to he uh, yeah, you can you can make a. Um, uh, we'll go with uh, for bullshitting people. Yeah, um, let's let's take um, let's go with perception. Okay, perception. 
Perception is. Yeah, um, perception is diamonds. Yes. Uh, I'm just. I'm just gonna use the four seven. Is that enough? Um. No, she seems to be in the right. He was married to her. He had an affair with the maid. And so, so she has all the rights in the world to divorce him and go live elsewhere. However, you never divorced him. There's just an awkward you never silence. Finished that. You never divorced him. And Why he is that? I never asked you for anything. She looks down at herself, and she refuses to meet anybody's eyes. So, what then? And Winters spread his paper on the, on the table, and he says, well... <clears throat> Let me speak as your lawyer for a moment. Um, you should have reached out to me, Miss Wood. Now let me speak as a uh, different individual, and he locks eyes with uh, Mr. Nimbir, whose interests lie with the occult and the magical. You are one of the reason why this curse keeps a hold on Mr. Wood. I don't believe death is the answer. Death never is the answer. But I believe you need to go and make amends. Immediately. <laughs> Maybe he just points himself. I have to make amends? No, 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 no. He, uh, Sorry, he locked eyes with you just when he said the, the occult individual and all that. I should oh. have <laughs> mentioned it after. <laughs> yes, you random person. <laughs> <laughs> what did I do? I believe that we'll take care of one of these two children. And indeed, under the effect of the potion, um, you would see both uh, the child on both Miss Taylor and Miss Wood would fade away. But there's still one on everyone's shoulders still, except for... Well, except for the detective and... Um, and Mittens. And Winter says... Hmm? Sorry, oh, I was going to say, to be fair, Mittens doesn't really have very large shoulders. <laughs> I'm really a lion. <laughs> <laughs> well, that takes care of that. What about the ghosts? I... There's one more child want or ignorance, whichever one it is. I, I'll admit it. I came here to help the old man. I, at least for the memory of my wife, I hold some love for him. It's faint. I believe ignorance was taken care of. It's only want that remains. But several of us seem to be afflicted. These little hobgoblins have anything to do with it. What do you want? That is a very I good question. My intention is very clear. But what do the rest of you want? I 
to help Mr. Wood. Because he helped me. One help. One help the man who set me up with the woman I loved more than anything else. Uh, Lady Tiana, if I may make a suggestion. Well, mm -hmm. the potion is still active. Um, there are two nurseries upstairs. Um, we have not explored those yet, but perhaps you might be able to see something in them. Oh. Well, let's go there, then. If you go up to the nurseries, you will notice that the morning nursery is completely empty. But in the night nursery, there is a an emaciated boy. Skin pale gray, almost greenish. And he's just standing there. And he's looking at the ceiling. And from time to time, through the ceiling, you would see one of these, like, ghostly bits of, of torn up robes fly through or pass through. Who unfortunate child are you, small being? I am ignorant. You are ignorant. You should know who I am. You are, after all, here because of me. Are you going to be my mommy? Oh, heavens no, child. But there is someone in the uh, garden who seems to be looking for you. But I don't want to go. There are so many um, people here that could be my parent. And how's that? Huh. So many people here are here because of me. Yes, I dare say we were tricked into this particular Christmas calamity circumstance, but I hardly would call that ignorant. Hmm. What is your, uh, what is Lady Sienna's education? Uh, okay. <laughs> Average? Um... Yep. Do you want to play a card? Education is a diamond? Education is diamond, I will yeah. play my... Okay, I'll play my five of diamonds. So for a nine, um, you would know that ignorance has many definitions. One of which is lack of knowledge. On vol involuntary lack of knowledge, perhaps. But ignorance can also mean voluntarily ignoring something. Such as voluntarily ignoring the plea of an old man for help. And instead come here for your own needs. Alright, child, I understand. This is sort of rolling us all up into the same little lesson to be learned here. We were meant to come here for selfless reasons, and some of us have been less selfless than others. Is that correct? Yeah. And then, and then when we leave, we all leave together. Or we all die together. Oh, no, no, I have no intention of dying here. This is not my burial place, thank you. But I think we could arrange to leave here, all of us. Okay, bye-bye. And he fades away. child. I will return to the other party members and inform them of what has happened.
So, Lady Wood says, we can just leave. Not like he said, and he, she points to the, uh, the lawyer. We just need to choose to leave, and the curse is broken. Well, Victoria, grab my things. And Where get... are the three businessmen? Uh, they've retired for the evening. I don't think we should disturb them. After all, you did say that this matter um, did not quite concern them. Um, Why are you... we can't break the curse? I I turned to her, like, don't we all to one of us, or...? And uh, we've broken it. I'm sure it's fine if we leave. So, in the sake for the sake of time, I'm gonna give you lay out the choices that I've opened up because of your actions. If you want to break the curse on this estate, the only two people that can remain are Mittens and the inspector. Because they are the only two that did not come here for um, their own selfish reasons. However, if by the stroke of midnight you all leave and the three guys are still in there, the curse will hop back on them. Will hop on them. Curse is broken on wood. That's for sure. Whatever happens tonight, the curse is broken on wood. So the question is: is do you all want the three businessmen to end up cursed like Scrooge? Or do you want to remove the Ebenezer Scrooge completely from England? My character would not allow it to stay, no matter how much he hates them. This has been a curse for se several years now. I would also want them to be broken free, because it sucks. A little healthy dose of haunting never hurt anybody, but I suppose if we've all got to get the businessmen out of here as well. Why is everyone looking at me? <laughs> well, we're waiting for your opinion, dear. You are the last one. Did you? Oh, what? What's your opinion? Seriously. Well, I, I actually don't have any. Um, I, I, I don't really care much for most strangers. Oh, I got you, buddy. Anywho, let's go get them. Um, well, because it's already... Uh, midnight here on the East Coast, and I don't want us to run too much over still, uh, though we're having a lot of fun. Um, we'll say that the door was broken down with tremendous effort. It's an the... old house, really? Yeah, no, that's true. It, it would have been broken down with little effort. Um, <laughs> the three businessmen are found in their uh, undergarments and uh, taken outside the premises. If everyone does leave the uh, estate by the stroke of midnight, the ghost of a Christmas future will basically drop down into the house and renew the curse on whoever is there for the future, which now that the house is completely empty and... Um, empty of everything, every anchor possible, his, you know, past uh, sadness and the things that weighed him down, um, both uh, the want and the ignorance, the wants and ignorance of people present in the present, and any future, future um, victims. The snow begins to fall on. England and London, as Mr. Wood will regain his health over time and become a 
a much better person, a much better father-in-law, and a much better friend to others. And once he passes, compared to Scrooge, he will actually pass on on Burdened. And that's the end of our adventure entertainment tonight. We have to rush the ending a bit. I apologize, but it's already been four hours, everyone. And I thank you, all of you, for hanging out in chat during that time. Um, I hope you all had fun tonight. Um, we're going to do our last giveaway of the night. Uh, so please uh, take it away, uh, High Shelf Gaming in chat. While here uh, on video, we are going to uh, do our little outros. Oop. There's another cat. Let's, uh, let's do the same order as we did the, um, the introductions. So we will begin with our alchemist extraordinaire for tonight, Mr. Nabir. Who are you? Where can we find you? Hi, everyone. My name is Anino. You can find me on Twitter at Anino Gaming. Um, let's see. Um, I, I do streams on my own channel, casual gaming, but uh, I appear... Mm -hmm in a very small, tiny role on two of Simon's other shows, uh, one which is uh, Cyberpunk Red and the other is Scion with uh, animation as well. Um, so you can find those uh, in the new year, Fridays at 8 p.m. and uh, Saturdays at uh, 1 p.m., both Eastern time. Speaking of animation, Lady Siana, who are you? Where can uh we find you? I'm Hannah. You can find me on Twitter at Hanimation Art or on Instagram and Facebook at Hanimation Studios. Um, I am also a player in Simon Scion game on Saturdays with Anino, and you can find me there Saturdays 1 p.m. EST. Thanks for watching. And uh, our great inspector, Mr. Armstrong, where can we find you? Who are you? Where can we find you? Oh my god, my Drizzt are the Dark Lord of the Knee Takers on, online. Um, my YouTube channel is the Dark Lord of the Knee Takers. Um, it's a RPG YouTube channel where I go through, review, analyze games. I'm currently doing a Cyberpunk Red series, Witcher series, and Deadlands Classic series. I'm not trying to get started up. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Drizzt the Lad. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for coming, by the way. And uh, last but not least, the, um, the magical, well, magical cat, cursed cat could, I would like to know, um, Sai, because you didn't, like, you, you sort of touched a bit on it, um, but who were you before? I, what cursed you? I was a prince of Sweden, and I did something very, very bad to a witch. Hmm. Hmm. Worse than stealing, for sure. I'll leave it all up to your imaginations. Well then, maybe we'll delve into that story some other time, but uh, who are you and where can we find you? I'm Sci-Fi. I hang out here on High Shelf Gaming. I'd like to drop in on the Cyberpunk Red games. I was playing Galaxy Ghost. Um, but we just finished up, so I don't know if I'll be bringing Galaxy back or if I'll be playing someone new. Um, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram with, at SciFi40. Um, and I also have a small business is helping um, have a business helping small business owners create order out of chaos. Hmm. At Fab Result. Um. Yes. Simon, I forgot to say one more thing. Um. I am going to be possibly running a Autism Awareness Day a online convention in the future. Uh, please, everyone, check out my Twitter for that. Um, uh, if any of you who are on stream are interested in helping me with that, I can let you know details about it in the future. Um, online I, game convention slash Autism Awareness Day. Sure. I, I'm actually um, – send me a private message about it. I'd be, I'd be happy to help. On that note, um, before we uh, leave, um, the Humblewood book, uh, so the advanced uh, reader copy of the Humblewood PDF and the $25 Reaper Minis gift card will go to Giagos, J-Y-A-G-O-S. 
I uh, don't know if I pronounced it right, but uh, Giagos, uh, congratulations for winning. Um, and as for me, I'm Simon at WanderingDM. You can find me over on twitch.tv slash WanderingDM every Monday uh, evenings at 8 p.m. Eastern for our Rime of the Frost Maiden campaign. Uh, then you can find me also on um, Fridays playing Cyberpunk Red and on Saturday playing Scion over at the Level Up Dice uh, Twitch channel. I uh, am also a uh, game designer. If you want to play the game that uh, I am working on with the company I work for, uh, Flyos Games, if you have Tabletop uh, Simulator, or uh, if you go on Tabletopia, you can search for Vampire the Masquerade Chapters. Uh, if you want to try it out, it's like an RPG in a box. Think a mix between a board game and a TTRPG, and it takes place in the world of uh, Vampire the Masquerade. So if you want to check that out, uh, Tabletop Simulator or on Tabletopia.com. That said, uh, you can also follow me on Twitter at uh, wondering underscore DM if you want to keep uh, be posted about everything that I do and wherever I am. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming tonight. Thank you, players. Uh, it was uh, uh, an honor to break the ice on Castle Falkenstein for me uh, with all of you tonight. Uh, thank you to all of you who donated uh, for the Trevor Project. Uh, we were last I checked at fourteen hundred dollars, fourteen hundred, yeah, a thousand four hundred dollars, and perhaps more by now. I'm not uh, quite sure, but uh, please keep donating. Please keep watching the twelve days of uh, actual plays, and uh, we will see you again very soon. Oh, and thank you to iShelf Gaming for hosting. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Have a good night.